Jared. It's very important. This competition is uh, quite intense leading into the last six or seven weeks. And if they can win today and just keep that top posse, it's so, so important for them. Yes, but I guess it's a reflection of the competition that both sides are a genuine chance of winning here. But Chris Brown, as we just saw, is a fair chance to uh, be the key player today. Yes, there is a late change in the Western Bulldogs lineup. Unfortunately, well, it's not probably not unfortunate. Danny Southern out, but what a quality player to come into their lineup. Craig Ellis, who's missed quite a few weeks, and he is a very important player and if he can get a few games under his belt leading into the finals I think it'll be another string to their bow. Yes and interestingly there's 12 players that have played all 15 games for the Western Bulldogs. Robo has against just three for the Brisbane Lions so uh, once again we see injuries taking a part there. That uh, does look a little bit like uh, Chrissy Johnson or maybe Daryl White in fact uh, just getting a bit of attention there from Shane Williams their long term runner on the, the knee and let's hope he's alright after a pretty good performance last week with the uh, Allies game. Matthew Clark is going to be an important player. McCray, Brett Scott and Bamford also very important in the middle of the ground with Ashcroft and Hart. It's their runners that really have to fire here if they are to have a win. Uh, no Alistair Lynch, of course. Uh, Richard Champion at fullback in his 150th game. But the good news, of course, is that Alistair Lynch will be joining you and I, Robo, after this break as a special commentator. Join us after the break. Brisbane Lions and the Bulldogs here at Optus Oval. First quarter from Optus Oval. Bulldogs going to the left of screen. No real wind advantage here this afternoon. Wine, McRae, under his favourite left foot, kicks up towards half forward. Dimitina punches to the front, ridden into the ground by Bartlett. West had it and lost it. The umpire's found a free kick going the Bulldogs' way. Going to Dimitina. Kicks over the head of Johnson. Down. Oh, well, Mark, free kick, whatever. Is it going to be 50? That's the question. She Richard, got up quick, didn't he? <laughs> Richard Champion came in pretty solidly. But uh, the umpire's not giving 50, so probably fair enough in the end. Cook, Dick Foss, has the job on him. And he's been paid the mark. James Cook. And Alistair, an interesting matchup uh, with Danny Dick Foss against James Cook. I guess that's uh, he's the opponent you would have picked up had you been playing. Yeah, most probably. Um, last year when we played the uh, had the 10-goal win here, uh, Danny Dick Foss actually done a good job on uh, Chris Grant. So, but obviously they've elected to go uh, at fullback today, and Matty Kennedy's probably got Grant. Simon Minton Connell left out of the side. They've gone for James Cook as their key forward. Certainly a confidence player if he can kick this one after taking a good mark. It would do wonders for him. Distance could be a problem. 55 out. Oh, he's got underneath it. A bit like a 9-iron golf shot. Champion in front. And McRae, not McRae, it's Ashcroft. He'll rush it through for one behind. The first score of the match. Speaking of uh, Richard Champion there, Peter, um, he's got the job on uh, Chris Grant and should be a good matchup. Actually, as mentioned before, Champs is playing his 150th game with the Brisbane side today, and that's a great achievement. Well stored, hasn't he? Uh, Ashcroft kicks in, well marked by Lawrence. Croft, the uh, man, mining the mark. Out wide goes to Lappin. Lappin in turn to Hart. Hart now, left foot kick towards half forward. Good smother there by Bartlett, and he's provided a good contest. Hart back there, kick forward by Robbins for Brisbane. There to within scoring distance, Brisbane. And now the race is on, the pressure on the Bulldogs' defence. Running away is Rowan Smith. Hand pass is pretty good. Montgomery gathers quite nicely. Now to Dimitino, who loves to carry the football. Johnson, his little kick, very good too. To the face of Chris Grant, and he takes the mark. He's uh, between just forward of the wing. His kick, 50 metres from goal. Gee, that was a big leap by Lawrence. Couldn't take the mark. Handball's away to Ackermanis. Then McRae, back to Lawrence. Lawrence's kick will be safely marked by uh, Montgomery. And yeah, it Montgomery. just shows, Robbo, how critical it is that you pinpoint passes there. Steve Lawrence did everything right, then just turned the ball over. Well, it could be costly because Wind and Rowan Smith have combined. The ball in the direction there of Cook with Dick Foss and just trundles over in front of Danny Dick Foss for a boundary throw in. Well, we saw a great transition from defence by the Bulldogs. Credit Hook uh, seemed to have a little bit of a misunderstanding with Rowan Smith down there deep in defence, but eventually uh, Rowan Smith worked the ball out and, and the silky smooth skills of the Bulldogs were on display. And, uh, well, the Lions are going to have to pl apply heaps of defensive pressure to try and unsettle their side and uh, knock them off their game somewhat. Clark and Wines contesting, but couldn't get it past Sean Hart. 
who was unceremoniously dumped. Wine wins that one. McRae on Hudson. Actually did well to get a kick out there. And the mark has been taken by Brad Johnson. His great kick on the run. He's kicked 16 goals for the year. Second possession already in the last couple of minutes, Peter, and uh, a dangerous player when he's firing. From 48 metres out, he kicks, and that's the first goal of the match. Well, the hard work there done by Hudson, wasn't it? Went away from goals with his kick, but in the end, it found a teammate. Good start there by uh, Brad Johnson, just getting the ball from the middle of the ground, and... Uh, well, he's an accurate kick on goal, and Jason Ackermanis, if in fact he's picking him up, which uh, may not be the case. Uh, I'll pick that up one shortly. In fact, he's been picked up uh, by Kennedy, I think. But uh, a pretty critical time for Brisbane now. They're in away ground. They're uh, out of their home state. They need to get a couple of goals on the board. Well, it's been mentioned that uh, it is such a uh, critical match up here in the middle of the ground with Clark up against Scotty Wine. Clark leaping high, got the ball down. Roberts not able to break clear, kicked away by Scott. A high kick and getting under it. He's having an impact already, Trent Bartlett. Kicks towards the half forward, but that's a disappointing result there. Chopped off quite easily by Dimitina, and he runs away from half back, kicks it out wide, and Montgomery's on the end of it. He's had quite a few touches already. That's his third. Gets the ball back, steadies, and then kicks into the pocket a little too high there, but at the back is Ramiro, reading it quite nicely, trying to shrug the tackle, Croft, he's caught. Ramiro over the top was hard, some good close-in stuff here. Now Wira, Wira for the Bulldogs, kicks towards full forward. Champion, he's under a lot of pressure, Croft applied it. Johnson, his second shot at goal. Brad Johnson from one step, he's kicked his second. Bulldogs at 2-1, and Brad Johnson has kicked both of the Western Bulldogs goals. And that was a very good play by the uh, Bulldogs back line again. Run that out, but unfortunately for the Lions, it was uh, at the end of some good play by us, but uh, then we turned the ball over probably a bit easily going into our forward line. Well, Brett Montgomery certainly having an impact with five possessions early in this match. Uh, the Lions are going to have to close down there, as they are on Brad Johnson, who's playing a midfield role at the present moment. Well, certainly the Brisbane side, uh, Clark up over the top, but the Bulldogs at ground level taking it away. Johnson, this is a good kick, onto the chest of Hudson, and he's marked certainly within scoring distance. Very much a goal kicker this year, Paul Hudson. Hasn't he been terrific? He's averaged uh, something like, well, nearly three goals a match in season 1998. And the problem the uh, Lions are having is that there's no accountability in the centre for Brad Johnson because Ackermanis is coming off the square after the bounce to pick him up. Hudson goes for goal, good kick. The Bullies have got their third. Paul Hudson's first goal. Brad Johnson has kicked two. Good start to the Western Bulldogs. They're 3-1, the Lions yet to score. You don't usually find that Paul Hudson misses those. A good lead, uh, just got out in front of Nigel Lappin, but um, yeah, very good kick for goal from 45 metres. And here we have a look on the replay, uh, as Alistair said, uh, fantastic shot at goal, but at the present time, the Brisbane Lions are starting in the middle with Robbins, Sean Hart, Brad Scott's picking up uh, Scotty West, the Brownlow medal favourite, but there is no accountability on uh, Brad Johnson, who's getting so many possessions at will through the middle of the ground. Wine, great start by the Bulldogs. Wind again. Now Dimitina takes it from Smith. Chris Grant, long way from home at right centre wing, looks for Johnson. Akamatis is there. West, dual breasted first winner for the Bulldogs, mopped up by Dent. Johnson, West, looking very dangerous across half four. The Bullies, Croft, played a lot in defence this year. Hand pass wasn't great. Ramiro put under pressure, cop one high, and Pyle lets it go. Hart. From left half back, Rowan Smith over the head of Bartlett to Dent. Dent's kick to Grant. Grant marks it millimetres from the turf. In front of the legend stand. Goes in short, Grant. Ramiro. Perfect position for Hudson. 
who marked directly in front of goal. Peter, he's kicked uh, 36 goals so far in season 1998 from 15 games. I thought it was closer to three goals a match, but uh, certainly two goals, over two goals every game, and he's going for his second in this match already. Chris Grant was a big key there. I mean, he's taken two marks, and they were 100 metres apart, just covers so much ground, and certainly um, it's, uh, he's a tough man to play on. One already today for 36, as Robbo mentioned, for the year from 40 metres out, pretty well directly in front. He's got another one. This is a great start by the boys. Hudson and Johnson with two each, and of course Hudson was the player that got the ball to Johnson for his first goal this afternoon, so they've been particularly dangerous. As Jared mentioned, I think we're going to near have to go uh, man on man in the centre. We've just got to stop this now and uh, before it gets too far away. And that looks like Ackermanis has gone on to Johnson and we'll be tagging him for the rest of the quarter by the look of it. A good kick there by Romero onto the chest of Hudson. Thirty-nine possessions currently. Uh, the Bulldogs to just fourteen for the Brisbane Lions, so they're just not getting their share of the football at the moment. They've got to make an, a redress of that situation very quickly. The Lions. Well, certainly showing on the scoreboard. Wine to Ramiro. Oh, Montgomery was fourth in line and forced his own way to the front and has taken the mark within scoring distance. Well, he can have a shot, but he's going to go for the short pass. He's put it to Cook. Well, it's very, very dangerous signs here, Alistair, for the Brisbane side. They're just getting too many easy posies, the bullies. It certainly is. Uh, coming out of the midfield, it's coming out pretty easy. And uh, in defence of Danny Dickvoss there, it's very hard to get that sort of pass with uh, not much pressure on going down to his opponent in Cook. Sounds like a co-member of the full-backs union. <laughs> no, you've got to look after him. But well, you're right, the, the uh, speed at which the ball is coming out of the centre is giving their defensive uh, players off the lines absolutely no chance. And... Uh, we're seeing the start of an avalanche here, and really, the Lions have got to do something about it, or they'll be out of this game by quarter time. Well, Cook, who was so good towards the end of last year, he's hooked this and scored it behind. His first score in this match, James Cook. And the Bulldogs, if they're to be, well, any sort of a threat, you would think that uh, they would need James Cook to stand up in one of those key forward posts. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Robbo. If the uh, Bulldogs are going to win the flag, they really do have to find themselves a, a full forward. And Alistair, you need Nigel Lappin to show some really top form a couple of years ago. State of origin player. Yeah, he showed some glimpses a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, on days like this, we really need Nigel to step, step up. Ideal for his uh, type of play. This is Ackermanis for Brisbane. His kick in towards full forward. It covers the players in that area. Back goes Scotty Wine, defending, helping out. Little hand pass, not too bad. Cameron under pressure, but he spotted Smith, and Smith loves to be the ball carrier. And he will set it up from the full back line. He's going to get run down, but he's able to get the hand pass away. Just a little tap there was an interception by the Brisbane side. Kick forward by Robbins, mark taken by Ellis, who was a last minute replacement for Danny Southern in this Western Bulldogs lineup. Cameron to Rowan Smith. Rowan Smith high. And Montgomery from behind, jumped early, got rid of Lappin out of the contest, rebounds back towards full forward. Well, where was Cook? I'm sure he saw Cook leading and finished up kicking it to Dick Foss. Dick Foss, now the Lions have got a chance here. Chris Scott has the football wide on centre wing. He could go direct towards the goal square. He goes in short to the middle of the ground. Ashcroft may have gone forward on the mark. No, says the umpire. Gives him the benefit of the doubt. So Marcus Ashcroft to kick Brisbane to within scoring distance. Gee, it's a, a real struggle for them up there. It's congested. Wirra, little hand pass, not too bad. Cameron loves to set it up. That's a good kick, close to the boundary line. Dent, forced to kick quickly, has given it up. Chris Scott with the football for Brisbane. Goes in short, the mark is taken by McRae. McRae left centre wing. So Brisbane steadying a little bit in the last few minutes. Champion calling for it near the centre square. He's ignored that lead. The problem they've got is Scotty Wine is just uh, a pillar of, uh, I guess, defence down there for them. And Matthew Clark needs to drag him out of that defensive area. Bradshaw had it punched away. Dent. And the mark taken down there by Garlic. Garlic at right centre wing under the small scoreboard here at Optus Oval. Champion and Grant. Oh, Champion. Good grab in front. So he's got to play game number 150. Gives it off to Ackermanis. 
the dock flag. Key duel with Scotty Wine today. Daryl White nearly got a mid to it. Tackled by Hart, ball kicked out to the advantage of Dimitina. White chases, Dimitina goes inboard, finds Cameron, who is named on the bench. Gives it away to Ellis. Lead inclusion, as Robbo said for Southern, dragged out of the tackle, Wine paddles it to the, to the front. Nearly a throw, actually. Marcus Ashcroft, you'll need to be quick. Johnson chasing. Kick left a little bit to be desired. Pretty hook. Cameron. Best and fairest winner. Brad Scott standing the mark. Leon Cameron at left half back. Goes to Scotty West. Up to Ramiro. Ramiro onto the left. Kicks off half a step up towards centre field. And Grant a little bit late on the scene. Then he applies a half Nelson down there on Robbins, who takes the safe mark. So Robbins with the football for Brisbane. He's uh, just behind the wing. Short kick. We'll get it to that area. Kennedy has taken the mark. A prodigious kick of the football. Matthew Kennedy certainly will put the Lions to within scoring distance. Not a bad kick either. Out in front of Lepic. And he hasn't let him down. He's taken a good safe chest mark. I would say for Justin Lepic within scoring distance. It should go very close from 50, I'd imagine. But a great move by um, the guys coming into the forward line. Then Matty Kennedy got, it, Kennedy got it in pretty quick and didn't give the Bulldogs time to block it up, which they've been doing so well so far. Well, you'd think if Brisbane are to win this game, Justin Lepic has to kick a bag full of goals. Yeah, we really need him to probably kick five or six. But what a responsibility out forward on him. Good kick, though. Right to the line. Has it been touched? Right on the line, it must have been just helped over by the Bulldogs defence. Scotty Wine does a terrific job getting back to help out. The kick in from that result behind has been taken by Curley. Running down the ground. He'll run through the wing. And then have a look and kick towards centre forward. Pretty good kick. Grant, well, Hart did a good job to get back that awkward bouncing ball. Hart to Kennedy. Into the middle of the ground. Robbins gives away a little bit of meterage back to Hart. Perhaps not the, the best option, but Hart able to get around his opponent and then put himself under pressure. The kick slewing off the side of his boot at centre-half forward. Bartlett working very hard. So is Scotty Wine for the Bulldogs, and the umpire will be forced to bounce at centre-half forward for Brisbane. Alistair, one of your key runners, as we've said, Nigel Lappin. Uh, brilliant ruck rover when he's on his day, but he's playing in defence over the last uh, six months or so, and at the moment deep in defence uh, in the back pocket. Do you need him in the middle of the ground? You're likely to see him get, try to get moved onto the half-back flank. I mean, we're trying to get run out of the back line, but, yeah, certainly in the back pocket, he's probably a bit too, too deep for that. 26 plays one. Seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Ball up, 50 metres from Brisbane's goal. Fisted away by Wine. Hudson's little give. A little bit too severe for Johnson. Hart puts his body on the line again. The two number 28s, Roberts, Robbins and Dimitina. Robbins again. Did he get one on the back? Not according to the umpire. Wira, Ramiro. Lawrence was late on the scene. Johnson down to half forward. And that's a good mark. Montgomery. Eight possessions already. Hudson. Thought about going off. Pickfoss was pretty quick to stand the mark. Brilliant performance by Brad Johnson. Uh, you had to be quick, but he got a very smart handball from the ground. He bounced up like the Indian rubber man, and uh, then he delivered the ball into the forward line. And a lot of people, I think, ran the ground suggesting Paul Hudson should have kicked that ball quickly to James Cook. He thought about it, but he is a goal kicker, and he goes back and probably kick his third. Trout likes it. Double Fire moves into position to indicate he has got his third. Three to Hudson, two to Brad Johnson. Out of the five for the Western Bulldogs, they lead by 31 points, six minutes remaining in the quarter. Well, at the end of the day, I think, uh, just have a look at this quick handball here. Brad Johnson snaps it out, gets it to Wirra, and then what recovery? Bang, he's up and away, and that's the sort of stuff that makes him a magnificent midfielder. But just getting back to Hudson, he didn't have the instantaneous reaction, and he telegraphed it once he, uh, he didn't kick it, so I think he made the right move. I suppose when you kick the goal, there's no argument, is there? He's kicked three, Brad Johnson has kicked two, and the Bulldogs have kicked five. Kick forward again by Dimitina. That awkward bouncing ball. Cook, snapshot, miraculous goal by James Cook. That's when you know you're in trouble when they start fighting through. Well, that really was just uh, something out of the box, wasn't it? He was under a certain amount of pressure, but uh, very close to the boundary line. Didn't look like this. 
missing in the finish. Yeah, once great, again, great it's goal. just out of the middle, Alistair. They're just the uh, Bulldogs are running off the square line with a certain amount of uh, determination, and they are just barging the ball forward. They are. They're just steamrolling it forward. They're coming through in waves. So it's uh, the back line certainly under the pump at the moment. Under the pump indeed. James Cook kicking one from wherever. Centre square infringement, according to boundary umpire. Against Justin Lepic, he pushed... Um, pushed his opponent into the square. Deep. So the bullies come forward again. Another big mark to the Montgomery. You know, watching the Western Bulldogs play over the last uh, season and a half, there's been many comments made about this guy being very difficult to match up on. He gets the ball at ground level, and but in particular, he can take a great mark. Yeah, that's what's so important. If you can get someone that's uh, good around the ground and also take a good overhead mark like this one, which is very good, Strong mark there under pressure from Dick Voss and Lappin. Well, he's in line for mark of the year. He took an absolute screamer earlier. I think it was at the SCG, wasn't it? And is that six marks for the game? Jeez, we might have to do something there. Brett Montgomery for his first. And he has got it. Flying start to the Western Bulldogs. Well, more importantly, Jared. What can they do? I mean, uh, between you and Alistair, can, could you work out something? You talked, Alistair, about manning up more in the middle. I think, I mean, in this situation, you've got to go man on man across the ground. You've got to try to shut the run down and uh, try to close the quarter out. Get to quarter time, reassess, but we've got to shut it down somehow now. So the bounce, yes, have a look at the scoreline. It is right, 7-2 to one behind. It has just been all Western Bulldogs. And they'll go forward again through Rowan Smith. He kicks it long, well inside the forward 50, but the good mark is taken there for Brisbane by Dick Foss. Kennedy receives the hand pass, kicks the ball out close to the wing, up high, Akamanis, that's a free kick, isn't it? Yep. Too early, getting rid of his opponent, not able to take the mark. So the ball will go back to Chris Grant. Cook providing the lead. That's ignored. Then Montgomery gives him a lead. And he goes in that direction and finds him. Great kick. Well, he might kick another goal here. No, he passes it and does it beautifully. This is too easy. Croft has kicked another one. Well, that really was as good a piece of unselfish football you've seen probably this year. I mean, he could have blazed away, but the precision with which he put it on the chest of Croft, who didn't have to change stride, right in the goal square, and he kicked Western Bulldogs' eighth goal. Well, Terry Wallace has been searching for uh, this sort of forward. He's used Rowan Smith down there for uh, a fair bit of the period early in the, in, early in the season with uh, not a great deal of success. But uh, I think Brett Montgomery, with his ability to mark and also his midfield running capacity, Makes him a certainty for that position now. Well, already it's the Western Bulldogs' best ever first quarter score against the Brisbane Lions, 8-2-50, beating 5-8-38 at the Western Oval back in the 1990 season. He's gone for the record book early, Pete. Well, had to. Bamford out to Chris Scott. Brothers share it around. That'll be Brad. And often Alistair... The first goal is the hardest one to get in these situations. Yes. If you can get one, you can all of a sudden get three in a hurry. certainly is. I mean, and because we've, we've moved the ball fairly slow into the forward line, as I said before, the Western Bulldogs have blocked it up very well, but that was moved in very quick, and Brad Scott's our best chance here to get us started. 35 metres out, about a 60-degree angle. Not a bad sort of a kick. And let's see what the goal umpire indicates. I think it's there it is. So they finally got their first, Brisbane. Two Scots combining. Brad, the goal kicker, receiving from his brother Chris, 8-2 to 1-1 inside the last four minutes of the quarter. Well, Scotty Banford uh, was forced to go wide and Chris Scott has run uh, from the middle of the ground and pumped the ball into his brother. And it was a pretty fair finish in the uh, at the end of that passage of play because a fair bit of pressure on Brad Scott. Pretty tight angle, but he was up to the task. Well, one would suggest that there's probably been a bit of that in the backyard over the years. Brad Scott yep. and Chris Scott combining. And uh, there's a free kick from the centre bounce. And it's going to Scotty Wine. So still uh, the Western Bulldogs taking all before them. Wind out wide. Looks for Ramiro. 
punched away there by Ashcroft. Was good disciplined football from behind. Garlic, gee, shrugged the tackle very well, didn't he? He kicks to half forward. Bulldogs mark. Johnson, was he off? Oh, he's a bit lucky. Hook in the goal square on his own. Well, if Brisbane are to win this match, it would have to be one of the most sensational comebacks after facing an eight goal to nil start to the game. If they could happen to uh, just steady and force this into an interesting last term, it would be a tremendous comeback. Johnson's kick. It's a goal. Three to Johnson. And the avalanche continues at Optus Oval. Perfect conditions for football. We've heard from Paul Couch that there's not much wind advantage, really, to either end. But you'd think there was a gale blowing to the left-hand part of this screen. Nine goals, two, to 1-1. One, one. Very good mark, that one, as well. I mean, there's pressure from behind. He didn't know where they were coming from. And just to stand his ground and take a very good overhead mark. Once again, no accountability on Brad Johnson. There's still three minutes to go in the quarter. 9-2 to 1-1. One, one. So just where will the scoreline end for the Western Bulldogs? Brisbane's got to tie it up now. Umpire will ball it up. Justin Lepich in that pack too. He's going to contest this with Wine. No, he's not. Clark comes at Wine. Wirra. That's a real up and under job. Probably wouldn't be a mark. Dimitina from the punch by champion. Well, that just looked a little bit too easy for Montgomery. Who is his eighth mark, and he's coming up for position number 11. And already a goal kicker as well. He looks like Daryl White's moved on to him there, and also another change, Shane Clayton's come on for his first game for the year, and he's picked up Hudson. Brett Montgomery for his second, and the Western Bulldogs' tenth. As I mentioned, it's already their best first quarter score against Brisbane Bears or Brisbane Lions. It's on its way. It is there. What a start. Ten goals in the quarter. Well, when we came here this afternoon, we expected to see uh, a brilliant uh, display of skills, but we were hoping, Alice, that it was going to be two-sided. Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, the, skills, the skills have certainly been very good so far, but, uh, yeah, disappointing first quarter. And, uh, I mean, Roger's probably going to... Um, I don't know whether he's going to stick with his same setup or um, change it all around. And you've also gone for the record book, Robbo. Yes, Peter. Just interestingly, the Bulldogs' highest score against uh, Brisbane is 17 goals, 16. Presently, they are 10 goals too. You would think that that may be broken at some stage during the afternoon. Daryl White and Brett Montgomery struggling for possession of the ball on the 50 metre line for the Bulldogs. And the umpire will bounce. Beautiful July day, Saturday afternoon here in Melbourne. Scotty West can't break away. Handball over the top by Clayton, found White, then Chris Scott. Left foot kick by that player to half forward. Bamford to run onto it. Just a little awkward. But the uh, leverage it was to help out. The ball spills now for Dimitina. He's very well tackled by Robbins. Forced him to handball indiscriminately. Off the ground, Ramiro to West. Then wide to Curley. Left foot kick by Curley. And on the end of that is Wirra. Gee. When you're playing well, you look as though you've got a couple of extra players on the ground, don't you? Certainly, and uh, interesting to watch, um, who's that, uh, oh sorry, I've lost his name. R uh, Rowan Smith has been lined up in defence by himself, so an extra man in defence, which is a bit surprising. Oh, this ball handling, Alistair, in this passage of play is quite sensational. Brent, Brent kicks the goal. Well, the drills that the players do at training was just on show here with Western Bulldogs getting their 11th goal through Chris Green. And it basically has been a training drill. There's uh, Croft, quick hands to West, out to Romero, bang, bang, bang. Chris Grant decides he's going to ignore a couple of options. One there to Johnson and another one over the top because, uh, well, he's done it pretty tough in this first quarter. He's one of the few Bulldogs players that haven't got near the footy. But once again, we see the Western Bulldogs doing what they do so well, and that's clearing it from the cross half back. They've beaten their best first quarter score against Brisbane by five goals. They've slaughtered it. West. 
intended for Ramiro. He may still get there. Brisbane with numbers. Akamanis gets it out to Scott. Kick left a little bit to be desired. He may find the sanctuary of the boundary line, and he does. So it will be a throw-in right in front of our commentary position. That was Chris Scott. What a quarter. They've this still got will... uh, eight seconds remaining. Can they get another one? 61 points is the margin. We just really see what uh, Roger Merritt would say at quarter time. Steady. Might be one word he could use. McRae. Over the top. Kennedy. Ashcroft. A little give. Nicomandis' kick. Up towards right half forward. Marked by the runner. That's the end of a record-breaking first quarter by the Western Bulldogs. 11-2 for 1-1. Second quarter from Optus Oval. 61 points the margin. Three goals to Brad Johnson, three to Paul Hudson in the first quarter. Clark and Wine go at it. Here they come again, down to Croft at half forward. Tackled by Wira. Ball jarred free. Hudson, champion, was there playing his 150th. Robbins hits the deck. West fires it out, didn't find the target, finds Clark instead. Chris Scott. Gives the hand pass away to Akamantis at left half back. Brad Scott, the only goal kicker so far for Brisbane. Bamford could have almost got a free kick there. Garlic, Cameron, bends it around. Wira, confronted by Akamantis. Chris Scott, off a step, kicks up towards full forward. Lepich had the sun in his eyes, didn't read it too well. Trask, Bamford dragged down. Ellis, likewise dragged down. Hart's got it. Unselfishly out in front of goal to Lepich and Dimitina had no chance of getting there. Good thing there, I mean the guys kept persisting, I mean it was great pressure by the Bulldogs, they just tackled and tackled hard, but uh, you know, Sean Hart, Lepich, they persisted and got the ball in from Wood, which looks like a certain goal. Credi Hook limping too, so that's got not good news for the Western Bulldogs. Two trainers are out there at the moment with him, we'll keep an eye on that. Justin Lepich for his first today, and he gets it. Well, their best forward work, Alistair, as you mentioned, and it did result in uh, the reward they wanted. It certainly did. I mean, uh, we need you know, Lepper and uh, Trent Bartlett to uh, take a few big marks and kick a few goals. Well, they're in front in the second quarter, and I guess that's the first positive. And right at the moment, the Lions would be looking for positives to try and uh, boost their confidence, boost their uh, team morale. But the pressure has got to come in the middle of the ground, Alistair. Uh, they've got to get some ball down there in a hurry. No doubt. I mean, yeah, it's very tough in there, and certainly we've got to uh, tighten up and make sure we make a real context and just get it forward. Is it feasible for a big guy in today's football to really put some physical pressure on it? It looks as though it's too gentle a game. You know, like Clark just there at centre-half back just burst his way through and just added a bit of presence? Certainly that's what we need to um, probably knock a few of the opposition over just to start something different. So the bounce of the ball to restart. Wine does it well. Gets it down to Johnson, who again kicks it forward for the Bulldogs. It's at centre-half forward. Handballed out by Montgomery in turn. Ramiro in trouble. Wirra got his foot on it. Champion does well. Gets it out to Sean Hart. He has a bit of a look and delivers nicely to Kennedy. Kennedy bombs away to centre-half forward. The sun in the eyes of the players in that area of the ground. And back there is Curley. Bump. And that's what I'm talking about. Just put a little bit of physical pressure on. Bradshaw. Now, whose free kick is it? Bamford's. What's got it? Bamford was Scrag. But it all started with a tackle from Chris Scott across the half-back line. It was ferocious. <laughs> oh, dear me. You wouldn't believe what happened there. Just uh, took off before he grabbed it, unfortunately, for uh, Brattles. But, uh, yeah, good up here. I think Richard Champion made a good tackle. Then Chris Scott and just set the pattern to get down the ground. Well, it's certainly deep in the attacking zone as we have another look at what happened there to uh, Daniel Bradshaw. He had the ball spent before he'd actually taken possession of it. And an unfortunate opportunity there for Brisbane. Really, Bamford had a chance to kick a goal. He unselfishly tried to get it to his teammate. And Daniel Bradshaw not able to hold on to it. 68 plays 13 early in the second term. Clark doing well against Wine. Bamford has had a bit of an impact since coming off the bench. Bulldogs will go forward here. Cameron out into the path of Dent. Wide is still brilliantly gathered by Dimitina. Left foot kicked by that player to the pocket. The ball spills to the back. Now, which way will it bounce? That should have been a free kick, shouldn't it, to Clayton? And whenever the 
Bulldogs have a boundary throw in or a ball up deep in defence, they always pull Paul Dimitina or one of their uh, defenders back and sit him just in front of the goal square. They back their own players to win the ball in that neutral ball situation. And when the ball comes out, they've got that sweeping player to uh, run free. And Paul Dimitina finished up with that football on the outer wing and he had no man, no opponent. So the ball finishes out right here with Kennedy. He can run nearly the full length of the ground after three bounces. He can do it again because everyone's running away from him. Now he gives the handball inside to Marcus Ashcroft. He in turn will go to Chris Scott. He can kick a goal. Go for goal, Chris Scott. Long kick. No one home. Rowan Smith getting back, but it goes through for a behind to Brisbane. Well, it was great defensive work there by the Bulldogs. Uh, the Lions had committed themselves. Everyone was up the ground, and it was almost as if the Bulldog defenders were playing the offside rule. They just kept floating back, floating back, and eventually uh, Chris Scott was forced to have a shot from probably outside his range. And it would have been offside too, Jared. Yes. Rowan Smith. Grant at the back. Clark. Went without it. Might get a second chance. The dock. Hart. Goes to ground. Tackled by West. Can't get it out. Going to be dangerous if he doesn't. No decision. Well, no decision either way. Probably fair. So a ball up. 11-2 plays 2-2. Two -two. Good contest though. Doc Clark got his hand to it and they bottled it up. Didn't let it come out easy. Wine had the better of that duel in the first quarter. Robbins. A little gift to Chris Scott who's been good. His brother. Goal kicker in the first quarter. Still the Scots. Back to Robbins. Hart from behind over Ramiro. Garlic gets it back to Dent. Wine provides the contest. Hart was there. Johnson backs into the pack. Robbins went sprawling forward. Crowd were looking for a free kick. There was none there. Ramiro's got it. Back to Johnson. Here they come again. Dimitina. Montgomery, a goal kicker in the first quarter. Rowan Smith loves this situation. 25 metres out, bang, kicks another one. As that play was being set up, Jared, you pointed out that Rowan Smith was sitting by himself in the middle of the ground and uh, it was an obvious target there for a bigger attacking move. Yeah, I think it's, it's a young trash there uh, who had two players that he had to pick up. One yep. was Rowan Smith, the other one was Brett Montgomery. And it only took the ball to get switched to the other side of the ground, which the Bulldogs do so well. And here's Montgomery. He knew exactly where Rowan Smith would be. He had a runner on the outside flank. And like a dart, Smith penetrated the goals. So the Bulldogs kick their 12th goal through Rowan Smith. They lead by exactly 10 goals. And they're going to go forward again. Ramiro, very skillfully done by Jose Ramiro. It may be chopped off. Dick Foss gets the handball wide. Clayton to Ashcroft. Bradshaw has come off the ground. And coming on in his place was uh, Hilton. The kick towards full court. Pretty Hook gets rid of his opponent. And all fair and above board, according to the umpire. Pretty Hook. Handball to Dent. Just look as though they've got uh, too many players on the ground. You call for a count. Curley with the football. Goes in short. Ramiro, very much a leap player around the middle of the ground. He's had a fair bit of the football too. Jose, 14 possessions. Chopped off here, maybe a little too flat. I think Terry Wallace would be happy with that. Hilton could kick a goal. He goes in and has a shot. Trying to get round onto his right. Hook the kick in the finish. Out of bounds on the full. And Robbo, I just think that uh, Nigel Lappin's got to come on the ground, like Jared said. Get him in through the midfield and get some run through there. Yeah, he's no good in the back line. Get him up through there and get him on the ball. Well, the kick back in the direction of Wine. Clark in front does well. It's a good contest between these two big fellas. They're uh, two of the better big men in the competition, Scotty Wine and Matthew Clark. Clark's kick to full forward, covers the players. Back there is Garlic. Ball spills for Lepic. Could have made it a little bit more determined. Hilton goes back in towards centre half forward. The mark shared there between the Scott boys. Brad leaves it for Chris. Pretty good looking player, Rory Hilton, uh, Alistair. He, he's got uh, some footy smarts, he's pretty tough and he's prepared to run. Yeah, good skills as well. I mean, frustrated with the knee reconstruction and spending 12 months in Brisbane before he got his opportunity, but he's done all the hard work and it's great to see him out here now and uh, just look for him, for him to go on in his league career. Good kick by Chris Scott. He's kicked the goal. Yeah, Brisbane have goal. got their third. Needed that one yet. Good play by Hilton to get it out. 
to the Scott boys, and uh, I think uh, Chrissy must be about 20 seconds older than Brad, so he got got the mark. Couchy, you uh, the Brisbane bench must have you uh, earmarked. Yeah, oh, look, I'm a good judge, aren't I, Jerry? But I think Nigel Lappin's just got to be <laughs> on around the, the midfield there. He's um, Look, he's made his name on around the wing and uh, up through the half-forward line. Like, you don't put your good players in the back pocket. you just got to be, be proactive instead of reactive. Gee, a lot of good back pocket players are now coaching league footy. <laughs> uh, Reed, David Park and Gary Ayres, Mick Malthouse, etc. Kevin hey. Shooty for one. <laughs> I'll Hay. leave that one alone. <laughs> He was a back pocket player, Dimitina. Let's get on with the footy. Dimitina's kicked a half forward. Grant on name written all over. Champion caught a little bit wide. Terrible kick. Clean bowls Robbins. Johnson gets a chance. Robbins chases. Cook. Out in front of goal. Could be another one. The snap by Hudson. Off target. One behind. Well, he basically tried to kick the old proverbial ball burster there, and he really was not under that sort of pressure, and he only had to uh, caress that ball through. Jared, do you think there's a little bit of lair rising by the Bulldogs over the last couple of minutes? Just, like starting, Hudson to, and just starting just to creep in, Couch. Over you, aren't they? Yep. Jason Akamantis to kick in. Brings it to this side of the ground. Hart is the target. And courageously takes it in front of Montgomery at left half back. And Alistair, I guess one of the great strengths of the Bulldogs is that they've got so many players who share the goal-kicking workload. Hudson's had 35 before today. Grant, 25. Collingwood, 23. Not playing today. Smith, 20. And Johnson, 16. Uh, so many options uh, through the middle of the ground and up forward that can kick goals. Makes it very hard to cover them all. Chris Scott to Darrell White to Richard Champion. Champion at right centre wing. Lippich the target, Credi Hook seems to be okay after getting that heavy knock, Bartlett goes after it, can't gain control, Cameron loses it out, or shuffles it out to West, Romero has to wait, you'll need to be quick, he is, Lippich bearing down on top of him, Lawrence at left centre wing. They do have the leading possession gatherer on the ground, Brisbane, Chris Scott has had 15 touches, Paul Dimitina 13. Lawrence, Ashcroft, Chris Scott again. Chris Scott right on 50, can he kick his second? It won't be a goal, and it floats through for one behind. Is it Peter Lawrence come on for um, Craig McRae, he's come off. Thanks, Couchy. So Roger Merritt and his uh, trusty sidekick, Rod O'Reilly. You would think, Alistair, that if they can maybe contain the Bulldogs to, say, 12 goals to half-time and maybe get two or three themselves, They'd be reasonably happy with this second. Yeah, really need to hold them, but we're in a bit of strife here by the look of it. Yes, Hudson going forward. Good kick to Daryl White. Big leap. Couldn't control the mark. Montgomery snapshot. He's kicked it. Magnificent kick there by Brent Montgomery to goal. Great goal. And uh, Chris Grant out now out of flank. Uh, again, good work. I mean, I think he's been pretty well held by Richard Champion, but uh, too much ball getting in the forward line. So 10 goals the margin in favour of the Western Bulldogs. 13-3 plays three goals three. Interestingly, the margin was uh, 64 points the other way around in round 15 here last year, wasn't it? Certainly was. That's one we wouldn't mind remembering, especially at this stage. A margin of 10 goals, 81 plays 21, and we're not halfway through the second quarter yet. So it's a bit of a an annihilation. Robbins lands it well inside 50. Dent to Ellis. Late inclusion on the side today for Southern. Still Ellis. Curley. Now Cameron. Johnson will mop up in the right back pocket. Grant the target. Two metres clear of Richard Champion. And been a change in the middle of the ground. Chris Scott's now running with Rowan Smith, who's gone into the middle. And Robbins has gone on to Romero, who was on Scott. And Romero's had 17 possessions. What a great handball by Scotty West. Ryan West and Curley. Out to Hudson. Gets around Clayton. His uh, father used to be the runner for the Brisbane Bears, as they were then. Montgomery. Also a former umpire. Chris Scott. Certainly been one of Brisbane's best today. Kicks up to Hilton. Couldn't mark it. Grant. Johnson. Clever. Rowan Smith. Too far out in the score. Darrell White should mark. Doesn't get the second chance. Hudson, did he have it? Tackled by Clayton. Up by lets it go. Well, that might have been high on Romero. It was free kick. Fluting with your form when you do something like Brad Johnson did there. I think you had 
do they, Robbo? Because he was going to get tackled. I mean, <laughs> they moved the ball unbelievably well out of the back line. The switch of play across into the, our pocket and then up the wing, back into the middle, into the forward line. Great play. I thought uh, young Robbins was stiff there. If a player is prepared to dive on the ball like that, I think he's uh, he, he almost loses his eligibility for protection of the head if it's just a little slip slip of the arm like we saw there. Well, that's usually the case, the way the umpires look at it. But yep. in this instance, it's gone Jose's way. 16 possessions so far for him. This will be kick number eight. Twenty metres out, hits the post. So maybe a little bit of poetic justice there. One behind by Jose Romero. Gee, he might get dragged the way they've been kicking goals. 13-4 to 3-3, and that's 61 points the margin. Libba not mic'd up to us, but uh, mic'd up to the coach's box. And as he told Paul Couch before the game, he'd love to be in action for the finals. And that was a great mark taken by Akamai. Certainly was, and that might be something that can lift the Brisbane side. Ashcroft, slick handball to Kennedy, over the top, support from Robbins. Robbins into the pocket, Hilton a little too high, Ellis, now Cameron, and plays the percentages. Hilton with rather Deliberate. vigorously. Now, has that been played against Leon Cameron? I thought that uh, slinging action by uh, Hilton on Cameron might have been worth a second look at. You watch Cameron go over the line, and then that was probably not necessary, but the umpire sees that as deliberate out of bounds. He's obviously having a talk to young Rory Hilton about uh, the throwing down off. Now, there hasn't been a report, has there, because he's gone back to the player on the mark. Maybe not. Robbo, Jose Romero's come off and Michael Martin's on. So you're right, Pete. Hit the post and <laughs> off you go. He's dragged. <laughs> Doesn't quite know where to go here, but with Rory's skills, on tipping a goal. Drop punt straight through. Hilton goes for goal. And oh, good tip. tip. Take us to the races, Alistair. <laughs> that makes you look all right, doesn't it? Well done, Rory. Mark my book for me, will you? <laughs> Rory Hilton kicks his first goal, but more importantly for Brisbane, they get their fourth. They still trail by 55 points. Cassie, uh, Jose Romero, has he got an injury problem? He wouldn't have been dragged for the uh, poster, obviously. He must have some sort of problem. No, uh, Jared, he's just come on and talk to Terry on the phone there. But no, there's no real injury I can see at the moment. He doesn't seem to be any pain. He's just getting uh, his calf rubbed, so there's no pain or any injury from Jose. Rory Hilton's goal. Involved in a terrific steal earlier in the quarter, so uh, he's been good since he came on. Hart. Had the hand pass blocked, Wine, round the medalist, gets written into the ground. West tried to get away with it, Clark still going there, boots the ball off the ground. Up to James Cook, that was a throw, not seen by the umpire. Wirra couldn't do much with it. Chance for Robbins at half-back. Oh. Hand pass to Ashcock, was, uh, well, with the number 10, but the wrong one. Montgomery gives it to West. Big fly from Croft, Clayton applies a tackle. Ball beats Hudson over the boundary line, or does it? Yes, it does. So throw in in the left forward pocket for the Western Bulldogs. And Jose Romero preparing to come rather expeditiously back on. Or is he not? Tyson Lane, perhaps, is going to beat him to the punch. Daryl White. Long hand pass. Robin slips over. Still able to get the hand pass away. Brad Scott, not a good one. Again, what Gomery was trying to get there, but he couldn't. Good play, though. Sean Hart, who has been good. Ellis chasing him down, or nearly chasing him down. He kicks to half forward. Punch away by Credi Hook. Ball comes up towards Dent. Dent at right centre wing. This is Garlic. Garlic down towards right half forward. Montgomery again. He's been everywhere. Tries to draw the man, and Danny Dickfoss to him. Tyson Lane just onto the ground. Goes at goal and has missed the major part of the prize. One behind. First touch, first kick. And kicks a point. 13-5 to 4-3. Jared, I've noticed a lot of the Brisbane Lion blokes are wearing um, moulded soles and they are slipping over a bit, so I think screw-ins would be the call of the day at half-time. Yeah, she's pretty uh, s soft and slippery out there, Couchy, and I, when you're trying to apply pressure, you've got to be able to change direction. Uh, 
in close quarters and Molded Soul set you down too many times. Well, Richard Champion went to go to a contest and he fell over 15 minutes before he could get there. <laughs> well, that's, that's, a, that's only a slight exaggeration, but uh, <laughs> we'll go past that one as we watch Brad Johnson. <laughs> Gee, that's a good kick. He nearly pinpointed his teammate uh, who in that circumstance was Brett Montgomery from about 40 metres along the boundary line. Good contest by Chris Scott. I mean, uh, mentioned before, he's had a fair bit of the ball so far, but also he's laying the tackles and making a good contest there, getting it over the line. And Jose back on for uh, Mickey Martin. Wind and Clark. Well done by Hart. Then Clark to set it up. Brad Scott. Little kick by that player into the middle. Lawrence. Must get a goal out of this. Ashcroft directly towards goal. No mark. Yeah, and is that a free kick? It may be to Chris Johnson. We'll take that one. What did you think yourself? Uh, looks like he uh, played it pretty well, Jono, I think, here. Maybe Cameron grabbing him. Did have a jumper. bit of the jumper at the back, so no, probably a good decision. Just hope Chrissy can convert this one. Well, they have uh, they've won this quarter so far. They've kicked three goals, two, to uh, the Bulldogs, two goals, three. And certainly, this goal, maybe one or two more before half-time, you just never know. Johnson kicks for goal and kicks accurately. Brisbane have got their fifth on the scoreboard. First goal to Chris Johnson. He spent a fair bit of the first half on the bench. Brisbane have got their fifth, but they still trail by exactly 50 points. Chris Johnson's the sort of player who can really add some spark up in the forward line and kick you four or five goals in the last half of the game. And well, Rogers changed the balance, hasn't he, by starting him as a full forward. Uh, he's pushed Leppage out to about 40 metres out from goal. He's also got Nigel Lappin down there as another forward. So where Brisbane started the match with a very tall forward line, they're now going uh, with a very mobile one with the likes of Lappin and Johnson, Chris Scott and Trash down there. Darcy having a run on the ball with Scotty Wind being given a rest. Croft. A little give, Ellis. Ellis kicked towards right half forward. Beautiful gather by Grant. The hand pass was at the other end of the sky. Straight to White, who got a, more than a nudge in the back. Ashcroft to Dick Foss. And the Lions run it away through Robbins. He could go another couple of bounces perhaps, but he goes straight down the centre of the ground. Punch away to Johnson. Lepich, a chance. Krediuk. Lawrence, what was that? Been watching the World Cup, I think. Brad Scott, Lippich provides the shepherd. Well, that's a real up and under job. Hospital pass, Darcy, first mark of the day for him. Alison, do you think you're getting a little bit uh, one dimensional and too predictable kicking the ball long into that forward line? Because the Bulldogs are just dropping two or three players back and uh, they're out manning you, out gunning you, and you just cannot uh, seem to convert your kicks into marks. You're right, and with our uh, small leading type players, we've probably got to go in lower and a bit harder. It's kicked got up as far as the centre wing, and that's as far as it did go. It's all tied up. The umpire will ball it up. Scotty Wine, as I said, having a rest. And uh, Johnson's been moved up the full forward and he's standing in the square by himself at the moment and it looks like Sean Hart's picked him up. Well, he will when he gets there. Lawrence missed it, Bartlett, Ashcroft, Robbins. Must look, must look. It's a better kick, oh no it's not. His skills have been letting him down uh, in recent weeks, uh, young Robbins, and that's the sort of stuff that is going to need to be improved if Brisbane are going to go on and improve as a club in the next few years. The skill level through the middle of the ground just isn't quite up to scratch. Trask to Ellis. Garlic was the player who didn't have the mark paid. Certainly a free kick against Ellis. Well done by uh, Rory, Hilton. Rory Hilton. Yep. Could get his second goal here within 10 minutes. No, gives it off. Well, it was the same spot, wasn't it? Yep, a bit closer maybe before. Ashcroft. Outside 50. In fact, he's about 60 metres from goal. Too far out. Gives it a decent old roost just the same. Daryl White! Great mark. Expect the unexpected from him. Great mark by Darrell. This is the sort of thing he does at training almost every five minutes. He's an unbelievable talent, and uh, certainly if we can get a few more of those this game, I mean, the way he can jump off a couple of steps and over the top, and nice, easy mark for a bloke with that ability anyway. Well, just has to kick the goal. 20 metres out directly in front. He has kicked the goal. Brisbane Lions sixth. He 
he's pushed down from half back there to kick that goal so a good move actually watching the Bulldogs they they get a forward zone up very well they push a lot of players back and make it very hard to get that pinpoint pass in this was a pretty smart kick by Marcus Ashcroft he waited until maybe he spotted someone who was capable of taking a specky on that occasion Daryl White who did convert and as I said before if they can maybe fluke another one there's still three and a half minutes left in the second quarter well, you just never know. Certainly, I wouldn't want to write them off yet. I mean, we can bounce back and just uh, need a good, strong effort here, starting in the middle. It's amazing what persistence can do mm -hmm. if you're all committed to the same cause. Robbins out wide, Marcus Ashcroft. He's been a key player in this second quarter. He's kicked a full forward, well marked by Garlic. Garlic from behind. Chris Scott on that occasion judged it a little better. Just a little bit long for Chris Scott then, and he's the calling for 50 now. for going over the mark. Well, he whistled him back two or three times and he didn't move. Well, I quite wonder about this. I guess the umpires have got to try and stamp their authority, but uh, anyway, the penalty has been put in place and Garlic to Krediuk. Krediuk's kick to centre-half forward. Up high, spectacular mark to Dick Ooh, Foss. He's hurt himself a little bit. bit. Has he got a renowned bad back? No, he hasn't, but he might have now. Looks like he sort of hyper-extended his back there a bit. Well, he gave it away, and eventually the short kick by Champion was marked by Lawrence. He, in turn, goes out wide to Kennedy. They still have possession of the ball to Brisbane. Matthew Kennedy to kick the ball to nearly the forward 50. Oh, great mark. Curly from behind. Had the leap, had the run. That was the a shocking, shocking sign for Dick Foss. If you come down and you go to your back like that without any... Uh, collision etc probably he's done a bit of a diss there and you'd expect him to go straight off so the Bulldogs now have possession of the ball Rowan Smith the ball carrier he's in a and bit then... of strife too he's trying to pick up Chris Grant oh champion drops a sitter Scotty West to get past Dick Foss unselfishly Tyson Lane goes for goal and it's not what Brisbane wanted Tyson Lane's kicked the goal Good news for the book for the uh, Brisbane Lions is that Dick Foss looks as if he's going to be able to uh, stay on the field. So the mystery back ailment uh, will leave that to Couchy at half time. But a pretty good uh, transition of play once again with uh, Rowan Smith, who's been in brilliant form in recent times, bombing the ball down into the forward line. A poor uh, skill error once again. And that's what has let you down so many times today, Elsa. Just uh, pure skill. Yeah, I've got to agree there. I mean, now uh, turnovers have cost us pretty bad. The difference again out to 50 points inside the last two and a half minutes of the half. Can Brisbane get a couple more before the break? Chris Scott tried to go off the ground. Dent tried to get it to Martin. Trask instead. Chris Scott, now could be their best player today. Johnson. Rory Hilton by himself, 20 metres out. He's missed it. Oh, that's a terrible kick. Straight to Curley. Play on is the call from the umpire. Over the head of Brad Scott. Martin. Martin at right half back, measures the kick, kicks it up towards centre wing. Hart has it knocked away from him by Johnson. It's out of bounds next to the players in the change gates. Unfortunate that quick movement into the, the goal square. I mean, Chrissy Johnson tried to get back quick, but kicked it off one step and uh, missed kick, unfortunately, in turnover for, for the Bulldogs. So can the Lions get another one before the break? Just to give them a little bit of hope. Darcy tried to paddle it to the back. Chris Scott again. Centering kick, fairly open half forward line. Johnson again, caught out there, Dent, former teammates of course, Colinuk, first touch for the day that we've seen, Garlic, free kick right back, there's a free kick, yep. oh, that is rubbish, Chris uh, Bond, that was fantastic there. work by Mickey Martin, sure the shepherd was there, but well, it was within the rules, Martin to stop the player from getting to the marking contest, sure, ball was within five metres, Chris Scott, looks for Hilton, couldn't find him, Cameron was there, Martin's been hurt too, Peter. He's coming off the ground. Chris Scott's in a bit of trouble as well. Yes, they're both uh, looking a tad the worse for wear. Montgomery clear of Bartlett. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Hand pass over the top. Needs to be good. Good tackle by Lapp. And ball jarred free out of the hands of Smith. The umpire will ball it up. What do you think of that shepherding uh, decision, Alistair? I've been caught a couple of times this year on, on that decision. It is a tough one, but I mean, Chrissy Scott was going very hard for the ball, but um, I mean, Martin, he would have had to jump out the road not to shepherd, I think. Yeah. Michael Martin in a great deal of pain down there. He's been poleaxed. You are allowed to put your body between the uh, player coming and the, and the footy. I would have thought. Montgomery's kick off. Grant, that is a class effort. Great, Mark. To 
Rowan Smith, who's got pace to burn, centering kick by Smith, kicks it long and hard up towards half court. Tyson Lane has got it again. Maybe too far out to score. Kick one already, 50 points to the margin. Can he increase it? Crowd roaring for him to get on with it quickly. He does, up towards full forward. Great effort. Mark is taken by Darcy. Well, it was a smart play there by Tyson Lane because there were a number of opportunities to kick the ball forward, but perhaps not one that was absolutely on. And he, uh, it was pretty disciplined play, and he waited for Luke Darcy, who sprinted from almost the wing to uh, get into a position by himself. And, uh, well, they should finish with a reward of a goal. Eight players for the Western Bulldogs have scored goals so far as we watch that in replay. Very balletic from Luke Darcy. So aiming to become the ninth Bulldog to score a major today here. Gee, it's a conglomeration of names, isn't it? On the goal scoring list for the Bullies in the first half. Been shared around, Robbo. Yeah. Three players have got three. Brad Johnson, Paul Hudson and Brett Montgomery. Darcy for his first, and he gets it. Great conversion there by Luke Darcy. And Robbo, I was thinking uh, only a couple of weeks ago that this bloke may be the key to the Bulldogs. If he can turn into a Spider Everett type of player and go forward, do some rough work, take the responsibility away from Scotty Wine a little bit, he really could add something of a premiership play to their side. It's all Bulldogs at half time by plenty. Second half from Optus Oval, and the Brisbane Lions would love to get a few on early. Remembering what happened in the first quarter, a little fumble by Garlic, not so by Grant. Kicks across his body up towards half forward, punch away by White, missed by Hudson. Ashcroft, chance for them to clear. Scott's kick out towards centre wing, that was Brad to Chris. And he's their leading kick getter for Brisbane so far. In fact, the only player in Brisbane jumper today into double figures with kicks, and he's got another one from Champions hand pass, Hilton up in front, Rowan Smith shuffles it out the back, another chance for Hilton, there is a whistle on play, chased by Dimitina, and there is going to be a free kick. Curley, over the head of Lepich, that's Bluey and Curley I guess, Johnson, Ramiro, for those of you that remember that comic strip. Oh, Peter, you're dating me. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Grant, to Johnson. Oh, a very fickle bounce. And Robbins backed into the pack, caught with the football. But it's going to be a ball up. Alistair Brad Boyd, no games. Andrew Gowers, no games. Clark Keating, three. Craig Lambert, five. And Jared Malloy, six. It uh, tells a story of the season of injuries and unavailability of and Michael Voss. players. And Michael Voss being injured. Yeah, certainly it's very frustrating to have some of your key players out and playing such little footy. Good news, Brad Boyd looks like he will hopefully um, make it back into the senior side next week. He was uh, named as an emergency today, so he can't be too far away. Uh, very close to getting selected, and hopefully uh, next week he'll jump back in and we can see what a talented player he is. That's and great. What about uh, Craig Lambert? Craig Lambert was really pushing for selection this week, but injured himself uh, with a calf injury uh, this Monday at training, so uh, he's probably on the sidelines for a couple more weeks. Jared, there'll never be another you. West, Hart, a little gift to Robbins. Robinson's kick up towards midfield. Punch away by Cameron, clears the zone. Back to Robbins again, Ramiro. In comes Matthew Croft. And it will be another bounce just outside the 50 metre range. That's, that's a bit of the difference there. The Bulldogs swooping on that ball at ground level. Clean ball handling, take the ball away. Young Ben Robbins just getting caught there and the ball locked in at centre half forward. And the Bulldogs a chance to score here. Chris Grant, Ramiro, it bounces, it hasn't been touched, it'll be kicked through by Cook. Well, he's made a certainty of it, James Cook. It's a goal to the Bulldogs. So James Cook has kicked his second goal early in the third quarter. You would think from this position, another three or four for him might just give him a chance to uh, cement a bit of a place in this uh, classy Bulldogs lineup going towards the uh, finals in six or seven weeks' time. Well, I don't think Brisbane wanted that. The first goal of the second half to the Bulldogs. They may get another one. Darcy's going to rub salt into the wound here. Right foot kick has been marked by Cook. That's a very good mark under a lot of pressure from Dick Boss. Well, once again, we 
see the uh, outstanding ability of Spider Everett, of Spider Everett, <laughs> of the player that could well become Spider Everett's uh, clone in Luke Darcy. Just charging through the middle of the ground. This is an outstanding mark uh, by any measure. He's hurt himself too. Might be winded, perhaps. But gee, if Luke Darcy can uh, do that sort of stuff regularly, he is going to be tough to beat. Terry Wallace is prepared to leave Scotty Wine off the ground too, just to give him a rest and give Luke Darcy a bit of a run, boys. Just uh, so he's obviously confident they've got the game under wraps. Well, James Cook just walking back around the boundary line to perhaps get a slightly better look at the goal. You can see it's a pretty tight angle, and he runs around and has kicked a, a behind. Two goals, two to James Cook. Scoreline now for the Bulldogs, 16-6 to 6-3. That's a 63-point uh, margin early in the third quarter as Lappin prepares to kick it back in for Brisbane. Not a bad crowd here in very, very sunny conditions. Colin Ute to knock it forward. Cook. Rowan Smith. Now Robbins. Back to Clark. Good shepherd provided there by Dick Foss to give Clark the chance to get it down the line to McRae. McRae's kick will land close to the wing. In front was Dimitina, couldn't take the mark. The ball spills now for Scott. That was Chris Scott. Clark to Hilton. Hilton maybe for the hand pass, no. Kick it towards full forward. And that mark not able to be taken there by Bradshaw. I thought he nearly got a grip of it, but not paid and forced over for a throw in. Mr. Mark earlier, didn't he, down at the other end when he tried to play on before he took control of the footy? I thought this was uh, just about a mark, Robbo. Well, maybe just slipping through his hands in the finish. We've got the uh, opportunity of a uh, slow-mo replay. Lawrence gets the ball out to Hilton. Hilton across the goal. Gee whiz, that's giving away a lot of meterage, and it really wasn't a certainty to take possession. Johnson dispossessed the harassment provided there by Robbins his kick towards full forward it bashed clear of the pack but only as far as Stephen Lawrence his kick is rather ordinary there by 1998 AFL standards he missed everything and the Bulldogs take possession and immediately will go down the ground Montgomery no what's going to happen they must have to come back and uh, all the way back to that back pocket where the player who played on perhaps didn't kick over the man on the mark. That's the only thing I can see that would force the ball to come all the way back to that area. He might have even been gone before the player on the mark got there, Robbo. Well, is that not allowable? No, I'm not saying that's uh, not allowable. I just, uh, for the life of me, I'm not sure why he couldn't have uh, played. Very strange, yep. Dimitina in the finish. Kicks it out in the direction of Luke Darcy. Gathered here by Johnson. Johnson's been a terrific player for the Bulldogs. He's already kicked three goals. And is that a mark? No, not paid. Three players for the Bulldogs have kicked three goals. Brad Johnson, Paul Hudson and Brett Montgomery. Two goals to Cook. And of course for Brisbane, they've only kicked six and they're all singles at this stage. Hart kicks it down the line. Knocked away there Ooh. by Dent. Good confrontation provided by Lepic. It looked all right. I don't think Montgomery was pleased with it, but uh, that's the sort of thing that I'm sure Brisbane and Roger Merritt would be looking for, because if you're going to go down, you want to go down and make the opposition feel as though they've played a game of football, and that bump by Lepic on Croft was good. So the umpire to bounce the ball just forward of the wing in Brisbane's attacking half. 15 and a half minutes left in the third term. The Bulldogs by 63 points. Brad Scott's kick has been marked here by Garlic. Garlic centres the ball beautiful steal down there by Bradshaw keen to make amends for not being paid that mark great tackle by Colin Hook and gets the reward well just doesn't beat Daniel Bradshaw's day it was a good interception and uh, he tried to steady and pass it off to one of his teammates but he uh, got barrel from behind Cameron to Rowan Smith gets on his bike quickly brushes one tackle that looked a little bit too high the umpire says no it wasn't keep going guys Cameron does Onto the left, it's equally well with uh, both feet. Tyson Lane just came on to replace Curly. Big fly from Grant, couldn't complete the mark. Dick Foss wrapped up by Grant. And the umpire says no decision on that one. Bulldogs player still down, two behind play. That's Montgomery, who's copped a couple in the last minute or so. 
Peter, I just got a question for Lynchy. Daniel Bradshaw, he looked like being sensational just last year. What is it, what's the problem with him at the moment, do you think? I think it's a pretty... Uh, he's struggling in his uh, second or third year. He's only 19. And I think when we're going ordinary, we probably expect probably a little bit too much of the of the young guys. And uh, we need a few of the senior players, you know, such as myself, when we're down forward to uh, hold a bit more of the uh, the uh, goal-kicking responsibilities. That'll be a free kick. Too high on McRae. Kennedy calling for it. He's gone down to Scott. Now on to Hart. Hart from left half forward or short of that position. Bradshaw again, crowd baying for a free kick. Darcy's got it just inside the line. Back to Chris Scott. There is a whistle. Okay, the umpire says it's out of bounds. Actually, Hart's been pretty good. He's had 11 kicks and uh, one hand pass and affected four tackles, Sean Hart. Little bloke playing a big man's game. And Ben Robbins having a good quarter too. Darcy tries to crash through the pack. Robbins appropriately almost on cue they run it out again Ramiro from Johnson what a Colin York. he's got a panic to move in goes in board to the centre square Rowan Smith is he off? no he's not not according to the umpire anyway took a half step the delivery of the ball down that flank is very, very good. I know I've spoken about it a couple of times, but that's what makes it so hard. Uh, they've got numbers running into the forward line, and uh, delivery like that makes it very tough. Rowan Smith for his second. Kicked one at the other end in the second quarter from 45 metres. And he may have missed that one, quite on the goal on fire. No, it's there. Good to see Steve Kynook uh, coming onto the ground and getting a couple of possessions. Uh, spent the, uh, I think, the entire first half on the bench. And he's another one of those uh, players that has kicked a lot of goals this season in bursts uh, generally, but he is a good goal kicker and just uh, indicates the sort of depth that the Bulldogs have got, and particularly when they haven't got that many injuries at the moment. The 17th goal on the scoreboard for the Bulldogs, kicked by Rowan Smith, and here's another one. Brad Johnson from 50 metres. High, long and very handsome. Gee, he just missed those. Just off to the left. Three goals, one to Brad Johnson. The most goals kicked by an individual for the Bulldogs against the Brisbane team has been just three by... I think it was a three or four players. Smith, Colin Yook, uh, Danny Southern and Paul Hudson, Robert. And Danny Southern was picked today. Didn't take his place. Craig Ellis was a last-minute replacement. And Chris Scott with the football. No, come back. You can see the umpire there indicating to uh, Chris Scott that he's got to come back and kick over the man on the mark. This is his 19th kick coming up, 20th kick coming up, six hand passes. He's kicked a goal, so... Uh, it's not even him that's going to kick the ball. It's Stephen Lawrence out wide. Now Hart swoops on it. Hand pass very well intercepted by Croft. Montgomery to West. Now West hasn't had much of the football really. Scotty West. 11 hand passes. Couple of kicks. Rowan Smith. Side stepping. Out wide in the direction of West. Over running it there. The Brisbane player. West to swoop on it. West to go for goal. Cook can't take the mark. What about the gather of Grant? Just terrific footy by Chris Grant. His second goal. And they're within a kick now of their highest ever score against Brisbane. Three points, in fact, shy of Well, I'm not sure the uh, Bulldogs players be all that concerned about the records, but uh, this was just an amazing, um, an amazing gather, as you said, Robbo. Watch for Chris Grant. A uh, bit of an overrun there by Nigel Lavin was costly, but there's Grant just plucked it with the one hand and snapped it uh, truly. Brilliant skills all around. Chris Grant gets his second goal and the Western Bulldogs 18th. And they're now only three points shy of their highest ever score against the Brisbane Bears or Brisbane Lions. Hart, champion, pushes Ramiro in the face. Don't argue, Jose. Montgomery. And that loose man in defence has been uh, a real bonus for the Bulldogs. It's worked a treat this afternoon. Dent to go. The two number fours ahead of McRae. Johnson. Oh, taken high by Champion. 
Rowan Smith has got the footy. Can he kick another one from 55 out? He won't. Oh, he mark the mark almost to Tyson Lane. Punched away at the last minute. Ramiro goes down in the tackle. Dimitina a snap. Off target, out of bounds or behind. It's the matter. One behind, kicked by Paul Dimitina. That'll be his first score of the day. A vital cog in the Bulldogs midfield. 18-8 to 6-3. Had a few injury problems earlier. Dick Foss to Lappin. Lappin at right half back, clear of Hudson. Trask. Now Hilton. They share it around. Chris Scott, leading kick getter still for Brisbane today. Up towards centre field or centre wing. Montgomery's hand pass certainly put Romero under pressure. Rebounds to Ashcroft. Clayton to Brad Scott. Rushes the tackle from Montgomery, puts it out in front of goal for Bradshaw, didn't quite carry. Oh, tunnel ball from Hart, it was OK according to the umpire. Robbins, blind turn, then blind turns into trouble. Lepic, was he taken high? Trying to get rid of it. Bulldogs free kick. Cameron on to Montgomery. Well, they're persistent, aren't they? That uh, red, white and blue unit. Jose Ramiro, just from uh, just one step, magnificently to Johnson. He, in turn, into the middle of the ground. Smith, run down by Clayton, holding the ball, dropping the ball. When are you ever penalised? That's unbelievable. Lane caught with the football. Clayton oh. puts the tackle on. Kennedy's handball over the top. It may sit for Darrell White. Darrell White running through the wing after two bounces. May even take a third. No, short pass is good. Bradshaw couldn't take the mark. Brad Scott, left foot kick. Not really all that effective. Getting under it is McRae, and he's taken the mark. Good mark by the little fella. I was sitting under that pretty high one coming in, but um, don't want to be critical of any of your teammates, but we're just struggling out there, and we sort of really need this, go uh, this goal to get us back in it. A bit going on there. <laughs> oh, Lippich, uh, a couple of uh, acts there that would have done any gymnast proud. first goal and he may have kicked the goal he has kicked it his first goal and Brisbane get their seventh goal a little past the halfway mark of the third term they were 6-3 at halftime as against uh, the Bulldogs 15-5 so the Brisbane side have kicked one goal to the Bulldogs three so far in this third quarter. And a good effort by Craig to keep his eye on the ball and uh, as always a pretty fair finish. Just past the halfway mark of the third quarter. 116 plays 45. So still the Bulldogs chasing their highest ever score against Brisbane. Brad Scott. Short of right half forward. Puts it up towards Bradshaw again. He's totally outnumbered down there. About three or four to one. Dimitina chased by Ashcroft. He goes across the goal. Looking for Darcy. White's there. Hilton offers a target. Gets the hand pass. Puts it out in front of goal. Robbins or Ashcroft could have taken it. Robbins decides to take the mark and play on and he kicks a goal. Very good vision by Rory Hilton there to see uh, Benny Robbins in the middle. Good left foot kick, hit him right in the chest and uh, good goal. So that's handy. I mean, he's had a good quarter, Robbins, hasn't he? He has. He has a little bit of the ball and um, McRae backing up after his goal, burst through the centre and got a centre clearance there. So that's good good signs for us. Nigel Lappin's off, boys, and Scott Bamford's on. Thanks, Couchy. Now, you, well, just, you, you, can, bit... you can just see the difference between the two sides, though, can't you? Like, so much self-belief in, in each other, the Bulldogs, where the Brisbane Lions just lacking a lot of confidence in each other and they're just making turnovers. Well, you never know. Alistair, a uh, youngster there, Rory Hilton's little left foot kick was very skillfully done, but uh, the Bulldogs go forward out of the centre through Scott West, taken here by Dick Foss. Hand pass looked for, and eventually Chris Scott, with determination, has tried to make the ball his own, get the, gets it off to Bamford, Bamford down the line, and Lepic not able to take the mark, and will the crowd give him some curry? <laughs> he had uh, a couple of little uh, inc incidents there with Scott West just before that last goal was kicked by Ben Robbins, and uh, I think the Bulldog fans, they were right onto it. So everything...
he does for the remainder of the game will be uh, closely watched. Clark gets it down. Well done to Scott. So Chris Scott again towards half forward. Not able to be gathered there by Hilton. Rowan Smith to Cameron. And away go the bullies down this near side. Swooping on it here is Colinuk. He's got a player running in support. That's Dimitina. Dimitina off the left. Kicks in towards the uh, area of Grant. He's a hard man to beat when he's in front. Goes right across the line. They can raffle this. And they messed it up in the finish. Montgomery, handball back to Garlic. Garlic with plenty of space. Has kicked a goal, has he? Yep. So it's a uh, machine here for the Bulldogs. They've dropped uh, quite a few of their players have kicked goals now. Simon Ten Garlic Robert. being another one. 19-8 to 8-3. And he's been a pretty good pickup, Simon Garlic. Uh, originally started his career at the Sydney Swans and Terry Wallace saw something in him that perhaps Rodney Eid uh, didn't. And he, uh, he really has worked his way into this side. He's another valuable runner and that's their great strength. The Bulldogs have got just so many midfield runners. Simon Garlic becoming the Bulldogs' 10th goal kicker today, and that goal made it the highest score by the Western Bulldogs of Footscray against Brisbane. Colin Yooks kicked down towards half forward. Chris Scott again. McRae, Hart, around Curley. Up towards Bamford in the Robbie Flower Mole. Neither of them spent too much time doing the weights. Bamford's pace gets it up towards left half forward, mopped up there by Wirra. They wait for the bounce. Which way will it go? Lepage a chance. Hart beats him to it. On to Lawrence. Back to McRae. On his favourite left foot. High and long. Brad Scott was the flyer from behind. And that's out of bounds. Well, Colin looks out of bounds. The ball's still in play. Ramiro. Cameron. 25 metre hand pass. Dent. They run it out of defence beautifully. Rowan Smith, penetrating kick to half forward. Chris Grant doesn't let him down. Takes the mark some 40 metres from goal. And Rowan Smith once again proving that he's uh, what's been coined in recent times a 70 metre player. He gets the ball, he kicks it 50, but before that he runs it uh, 20 metres just about every time. And he can get the ball from defence and uh, into that attacking zone where Chris Grant generally lurks uh, in very quick succession. Mark number eight for Chris Grant coming in for kick number 12 and it will be his third goal if he's accurate. Looks pretty good from here. They go on by a curves. It's through. marking goal by Grant then very hard player to play on to match up with He's such a good athlete that covers as we we're talking about in the first quarter goes way up the ground covers a lot of territory but at the same time as we'll see here can hold his ground and take a very strong overhead mark one on one well three goals now to the Western Bulldogs champion centre half forward Chris Grant 20 goals, 8 to 8 goals, 3. They kicked 11 goals in the first quarter, the Bulldogs. Now, out of the centre, Robbins kicks across his left shoulder. Doesn't quite get the penetration he would have been looking for. Colin Uke goes in the direction of Credio. Wide in turn to Rowan Smith. Just took one step too many. The kick eventually becoming ineffective. Bamford gets back and swoops on it. Kicks into the uh, area of Robbins. Robbins, the handball into the middle of the ground. Chris Scott again. The little kick, he's given it up. Standing his ground manfully there was Paul Dimitina from behind Ashcroft. Instinctively, hand passes away to Cameron. Cameron out wide. Johnson, favoured by the bounce. Quickly onto his right foot. Kicks down the line and Montgomery is marked. Always just seems to be a red, white and blue Guernsey on the end of a kick or a hand pass. Montgomery's kick to half forward, great mark, Grant again. You could see that coming, couldn't you? Nine marks to Chris Grant. Quality player. He's an outstanding champion, isn't he, Robbo? And, well, after the success of France in the World Cup last week, uh, almost every Bulldog supporter you ran into made the point that it was the year of the red, white and blue.
Well, that's fair enough. Uh, they probably fluffed an opportunity last year, and I'm sure that that will be uh, on their minds. First and foremost is to get into the eight and into a top position in the eight. Well, they're doing the right thing so far, and this is not going to do their percentage any harm whatsoever. Grant goes back and kicks his four. And that goal makes Chris Grant the highest ever goal kicker by a Western Bulldogs player against the Brisbane Lions. With four. Well, that's what we're scrambling for now, isn't it? All the uh, the records of the past, uh, Bulldogs versus Brisbane Bears, Brisbane Lions, because it is a, a one-way street as far as the scoreboard is concerned. 21-8 to 8-3. And in situations like this, I mean, Brisbane Lions, we're... Uh, we'll be Pretty hard push to win the game from here, but uh, certainly we've got to bounce back, get some pride out of the game, and just make sure we finish it off strongly. Yes, I think that's a pretty fair comment. Hudson, don't hang your head. Body language tells us a lot. Hudson's kicked to Montgomery. Well, the rest has certainly done the Bulldogs the world of good. And those of them that didn't play in the State of Origin matches last week. Dozen marks to Brett Montgomery. Yeah, he's, he's coming up for his position. 26 Strong hands, hasn't he? Yep. He's uh, probably the best on the ground at this stage. The game is already over as far as the result is concerned. And uh, it's just a matter of how far and how well this uh, side can play. And maybe Brett Montgomery, maybe it's his best game ever for the Western Bulldogs. Former reserves best and fairest winner. Back in 1996 from 48 metres. I reckon he's got another one. He has. So he's got four now to hit with Chris Grant. 22-8 to 8-3. We've got four minutes, or a little bit less, left in this quarter. Interesting history uh, on Brett Montgomery. I think that uh, it's right in saying that he was playing county cricket when he was about 21-22, and he was uh, not probably going as quickly up the ladder in that sport as he would like. He came back to Melbourne and got himself a chance at uh, the Bulldogs and really has shown himself this season that he is a major force in the game. Well, he's very clean, isn't he, with uh, with his ball handling. As distinct from uh, the Brisbane side, there is an example where it was shared between Kennedy and his teammate in Robbins, and Kennedy under pressure just kicked it across the line. Hudson is going to get a free kick, is he? No. What's happened here? Got a bit of a knee in the head, I think. Hudson, but... Um, well, a free kick maybe for a shovel out, I think, was what the umpire was trying to indicate. Oh, he got a knee in the head, yeah. Well, what in the finish? How did Brisbane get the free kick? It's I don't know, amazing. we'll take it, though. It's amazing, isn't it? Sometimes, but uh, the umpire found it. Rowan Smith with the ball. Kicks it back to an in scoring distance, and there's another mark to uh, Montgomery, is it? Yes, 13 marks now. Just a magnificent aerialist for a player, not uh, a really tall player. Colin Newt takes the hand pass, kicks in the area of Cook. The ball spills for Hart, back to Ashcroft. Ashcroft can go across the line. The player taking the mark is Kennedy. Kennedy now kicks it towards centre-half forward. Bounces, and bounces maybe in the favour here of Richard Champion. He gets past, Great and he goal. kicks it high. It may be a goal to Brisbane. The goal umpire right on the goal. Yes, it's a goal. Great snapshot by Champs over his left shoulder, so that's uh, certainly what we needed. I mean, Jared, you've probably been in this situation with the Swans in your earlier days, but what do you do in this situation? I mean, we've got to stop the rot somehow. Do we, uh, I mean, well, you can't really start a fight, but uh, what do we do? <laughs> She's pretty tough. I tell you what, I was in this situation more times with Melbourne than perhaps Sydney, but uh, there's very little I think you can do. It's almost as if, uh, it's almost as if you're in a trance and one side's absolutely on fire and in the zone and no matter how hard you try, and let's uh, not make any mistakes, the Brisbane Lions have uh, tried their guts out for the majority of the game, but they just haven't, it just hasn't fallen into place. At all. Darcy up to Grant for number five, 48 metres out, and he has missed. Well, that was probably one of the easiest ones that he's had today. Four goals, one to Chris Grant. Peter. Paul Hudson's got a slight cut above his right eye, so there's not too much damage done. That was the knee, I take it, uh, Couchy, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah, he uh, didn't look too good for a minute there, but thanks for that. Yep. Kick into the outer side. Lippich outnumbered, punch away by Dimitina. A little bit too severe for his teammate in Alice. 
boundary umpire will throw it in 60 meters from goal two minutes remaining in the third term still haven't seen the reappearance of scotty wine since darcy came on he'll contest with bartlett <coughs> flips it out the back bamford with ramiro beats him plenty of speed scotty bamford kicks to hilton at half forward or short of that position Rory Hilton, Kretiok in the road, Akamanis was coming fast at him, Wira. and Wira got the worst of it. It's pretty courageous stuff by Kretiok though, wasn't it? Jumping in the path of two oncoming players, and uh, not only that, he completed the mark, great stuff. Dent to Garlic, the two number fours do battle, McRae first to recover, kicks it off the ground, Bamford, well done. Trask. Out to White. Dent on the mark. White too far out to score. Put the batter. Kicking a bit from goal from there. Champion and Credio. Champion takes the mark. Good grab. Kicked the goal just a minute ago. With, uh, as Alistair said, a terrific snapshot. Let's see if he can convert here from what will be a fairly severe angle. Just read it best, didn't he? Yeah, had the better judgment there. One other player has been very good for us in this quarter. I think Scotty Bamford on the wing has delivered the ball and carried the ball well into the forward line. So Richard Champion in game number 150 that he'll probably remember for all the wrong reasons, but for his second goal. And I think he's kicked that. He has. And he becomes the first multiple goal kicker for the Lions today. You wouldn't reckon by the look on his face, would you? No. <laughs> well, it's just been a tough day at the office for everyone wearing the Lions jumper today, but uh, I guess Alistair racking up the 10th goal puts it into a, a level of respectability that otherwise wouldn't be there. Well, and, for uh, sure. I mean, I'm sure we can go into three-quarter time just trying to set up the last quarter to make sure we can outscore him, at least to salvage something, as we said before. A Richard Champion with two goals against his name both in this quarter within uh, about three or four minutes of each other. Good snapshot and then a good set shot from a difficult angle. Punched forward by Darcy, gathered by Hart. Hart kicks it back. Krediuk going back. May just play the percentages here, Steve Krediuk. He's going to get run down, but he got the hand pass away. Wirra, Ellis. Always seems to be someone there to back up. It's a great sign for the Bulldogs. Wirra then Dent. Dent to shrug the uh, white tackle and then goes out very wide. Montgomery jumped early. That was just quite miraculous again. He's got Mark number string. 14. He's got it on the string, that's for sure. They're just falling in his hands and playing very well. Well, it's just a terrific day out for Brett Montgomery. The siren has ended. A bit of a birthday party again in that third term for the Bulldogs. They kick seven goals, four to the Lions, four straight goals. And at three-quarter time, much to the delight of Terry Wallace and Brian Royal, the Western Bulldogs have gone right on with it. After kicking 11 goals to one in the first quarter, they lead at three-quarter time. And the Bulldogs leading 141 to 63 as we begin the last quarter. Terrific day for football, absolutely ideal conditions. Clark gets it to Kennedy. A half a step, kicks to half forward. Champion, has he been caught behind? Ellis is in front, and he'll be paid the mark. Last minute inclusion today for Danny Southern, and I suppose that indicates the strength that the Western Bulldogs do have. Tony Liberatore, of course, who's on the hookup today, thinking about coming back before the end of the season. Just add to their strength, Johnson. Low trajectory drop punt, Akamatis leads out well and takes the mark in front of Wirra. Well, we've seen goals kick from this position today. Jason Akamatis. Oh. Yeah, that's not a bad sort of a kick. Oh, great kick, Jason. Terrific stuff. Great kick by uh, Acker there, but uh, Chrissy Johnson was great delivery of, of the ball into Acker at full forward. Now, if Jason Ackermanis is going to play full forward, he's got to lead long and hard and just really run the guys about. He just can't be expected to stand there and take one-on-one -on -one marks. Oh, he did it right then. Yeah, no, it was good lead. Very good lead and great kick for goal. So, um, you yeah, know, it's a good sign. We yeah, might it was be a fantastic out conversion also, wasn't it, uh, from a tight angle. And they're the sorts of skills that uh, are required at the top level. And 
I guess that uh, Brisbane can do it in patches. They've just got to do it uh, for the majority of the game, particularly early in the match before it's decided. Uh, obviously, uh, Chris Johnson might prefer to play down the ground rather than be stuck in a position. Well, it's been uh, very hard to play in the forward line uh, today, certainly. But, uh, no, he's a good user of the ball. And uh, if we can get him in the midfield, get him with a bit of the ball, he'll do a, a lot with it. Well, he did then. And uh, this is Brad Johnson. Kicks the ball to an unopposed Chris Grant. His little left foot kick is good too. And Cook did well. Determined effort. Chris Grant, be careful because uh, first of all, you don't want the ball taken away from Cook. But secondly, remember what happened last. He doesn't year. want to be reported. Not just from a personal point of view, but he's a team leader. I think he's going to get 50, 50 meters here, is he? No. I think he wants he it. Thinks he, might, he thinks he's going to get it. Yeah, but I don't think he is. It wasn't much in it, do you reckon? The finish. Didn't look anything. James shoulders been shrugged. We'll go back and shoot for his third goal. And a rather casual James Crook with a little wink from one of his mates, obviously. Just gets a little bit of touch in these remaining half a dozen games before the finals. He just could present himself and uh, add that little bit more flavour to the Bulldogs lineup. They certainly need someone to stand up at full forward. Wouldn't it be a potent forward line? His kick is, well, not good. And scores just a behind. Two goals, three to James Cook. And just looking there, I mean, there wasn't much that Danny Dickfoss could do there. And just Grant flying the flag for his teammate. The kick in has been marked by Dick Foss. Well, not too much in either of those, really. A lot of uh, huffing and puffing, but not too much to preserve the piece. Dick Foss short of half back to Darrell White. Took a good mark, kicked a goal in the second quarter. Front of Dick Foss again. Then he tries to get around Johnson, which he does successfully. Kick to centre wing, Darcy. Collides with Clayton. Cameron takes the ball out of bounds. Did a good job there, Clayton. He was confronted by Luke Darcy, and at least he's forced a boundary throw in. Well, really nothing too much at all in that. Flying the flag, I think you uh, described it as Robbo. That's pretty well close to the ball. Cameron. Ramiro. Hand pass ineffective. Dent. West. Despite the scores, hasn't really been able to start today. Grant to Montgomery. Croft, 25 metres out, bends it back and kicks a beauty. That team kicking too many goals, as a rule, Matthew Croft, but he's kicked two today. And that was well executed, 23-10 to 11-3. Yes, he's one of those sorts of players that can play either end of the ground. Uh, generally, he's been regarded more of the, as a defensive player, but he's played centre-half forward a, a number of times this season. And pretty good conversion there by uh, Matthew Croft. So seven goals for the year now to Matthew Croft. Bulldogs will get away from the centre bounce again. This is Creddy Hook. Kicks to half forward. Knocked away there by Lepic from Grant. And a push in the back, according to the umpire. We had today Peter Carey, Mark Nash and David Ackland officiating. Justin Lepic. We have another look here. In the finish, it was against Garlic on Lepic. The kick goes to Dick Foss. He, in turn, across that line to Johnson. Now, Johnson... Kicks into the middle. Oh, good mark taken by Champion. He's done well at centre forward, uh, Richard Champion. It was a good move suggested by Alistair Lynch at half time. Well, what about Brett Montgomery? I mean, he's taken mark number 15 across the half back line after having kicked four goals. So he's certainly covering some territory. Another possession in this passage of play. One bounce, looks down the ground, kicks towards centre half forward, and the mark 
fairly well unopposed to Curley. Not quite up to Senar Ford. He kicks down towards Cook. Cook provides the contest. The ball spills to the front of the pack. Taken by Clayton. Clayton's kick will be marked by Chris Scott. Coming up for possession number 31 to ever, Chris Scott. And if ever an opportunity was there for the square up, Robert, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Too true. Bamford to try and kick it to his own advantage. Well done by Curley just to lock it up. And the ball spilling out now to Clark. In uh, perhaps two minds now, still two minds, and the kick eventually smothered by Ellis. Ball with Robbins, hand pass. Can Champion B come without doubt the uh, Brisbane side's leading goal kicker? He's kicked it behind, but he's still the only multiple goal kicker for Brisbane. Two goals, one to Richard Champion. In Matthew Clark's defence there, he didn't have too many up options up forward and was just waiting for someone to move, so he got you know, held onto it for a bit too long. Leon Cameron. Kick the centre wing, Lepic, went to punch away and comes down with the football. And I asked the question, why wasn't it a mark? Certainly pretty close to a mark, but not paid. So the Western Bulldogs, he'll ask the question. Seven points away from their highest score of the season. That was 155 points in round 11 against Adelaide. Tap down to Robbins. Dead in front, got nudged out. Umpire says free kick. Champion coming off the ground limping. That's not good news for the Lions. Champs has been very good, as Jared pointed out, up forward there. And uh, to lose him possibly to a calf injury, it may be, that he's had been having some problems with. A 150th game milestone that uh, could have turned out better. Clark with Darcy. What about Nigel Lappin? Uh, we see him on the bench there, Alistair. Uh, he's obviously not travelling all that well. Is he, is he comfortable with it in himself? Look, Nigel's probably to his high standard. He's not playing as well as he, he knows he can, so he's bit, bitterly disappointed. But, um... Well, great goal to Jose it. Romero. It is a great goal. disappointed to see him on the bench at this present stage. It is, I mean, he's such a talented player. We sort of uh, need guys like that out there and firing, but um, yeah, he's struggling a little bit at the moment. And Leachy, he's got a, a corky on the right thigh there, so it's not his calf, so... That's good news Just for next cautionary. week. Terrific goal to Jose Romero, and he becomes the 11th Western Bulldogs player to kick a goal today. 24-10, 154, one point shy of their highest score of the season, as I said, in round 11 against Adelaide, so you would reckon from this stage of the final quarter, they should notch that up. McRae will be taken high. Still gets his kick in, Lawrence in front, couldn't take the mark. Evades one tackle, back to Bamford, nice ball onto the right, snap at goal, off target, one behind, kicked by Scotty Bamford. Peter, while there's a bit of a lull in proceedings, we do uh, acknowledge the uh, players when they wear black armbands. I just feel as though I've seen the umpires wearing black armbands today, and I'm sure it would be in recognition of uh, one of our umpires from the past, Jack, Jack Irving. Irving, who died during the week, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it's worthwhile noting that uh, he was a great bloke, and unfortunately... Rough uh, up, they called him yes. Robbo, I think, didn't they? Well, no longer with us, Pete, and uh, our sympathies go to the family, of course, and a uh, good acknowledgement by the umpires in, at today's matches. Was involved in the very famous free kick against Doug Wade, wasn't he? Carlton player? Yes. Uh, Peter Barry. Peter Barry, that's right. Good bit of trivia. So the boundary throw in at left half forward for Brisbane. Good gather by Curley. Crediook forced to kick effectively to half forward Montgomery trying to do a uh, miraculous one-hander and he's going to get the free kick being held by the right arm looking maybe to kick into the middle may go in the direction of Cook he does and puts it in the face of James Cook who has taken the mark and didn't like the attention again that he received from Danny Dickfoss so Cook from in front of the Carlton Social Club, the George Harris stand here at Optus Oval. James Cook, of course, played quite a bit of football with the Blues. Now trying to cement a place in this 
very good Western Bulldogs lineup. He goes for a long kick by G. That's a good kick. Touched right on the line and helped over for a rush behind to the Bulldogs. It's a big score, isn't it? Western Bulldogs 24 11 to 11 5. That's uh, 84 points the margin. And Roger Merritt, Andrew Ireland, Rod O'Reilly. That equals their highest score for the year, Robbo. Well, we're looking for lots and lots of trivia now because uh, the real heat has gone out of this match. Cameron, go Pete. Oh, another one for you. Five times over 100 points at Optus Oval this year, Robbo. Well, Leon Cameron in trying to get the distance just hooked his kick a little. Scored a behind. 24-12 to 11-5. And if Leon Cameron had have kicked that, Peter would have been, what, 11? 12 goal kickers for uh, 12 Bulldogs. Yeah. Paul Hudson having a bit of a chat there to uh, the little terrier himself, Tony Liberatore. We know that uh, Mickey Martin has come off the ground for the Bulldogs. That's a good mark taken by Luke Darcy. He pumps it straight back in. And is that a mark to Lane? Not paid. Lepic over the top. Umpire decides on a bounce only 30 metres from the Western Bulldogs goal. 24-12 to 11-5. Four goals each to Chris Grant and Brett Montgomery. Two goals to Richard Champion, who presently is on the bench for Brisbane. Kicked again. Is that Montgomery? Yes, it was. Snapshot over his left shoulder. Cook couldn't take the mark and spills for a throw in. Amazing stats for him, aren't they? 19 kicks, huge. 14 handballs and 15 marks. Just a, a real birthday for Brett Montgomery. Boundary throw in as Paul Hudson prepares to come back onto the ground. Clayton gets the hand pass to Lepic. Lepic goes wider still to Daryl White. They can carry the ball down the ground. This boy is quite an athletic person. He's had two, then a third bounce. Maybe again. Now he kicks into the pocket. Too high for Ackermanis. He may get it back. He goes after the football, then delivers the hand pass. Well gathered by Bamford. Now Marcus Ashcroft going for goal. Ashcroft has kicked it behind. No luck for Brisbane. Ashcroft, his first score, just a behind. So approaching the halfway mark of the last quarter, James Cook coming off and Scotty Wine to come back on. You can give it a good chance up there today. You probably reckon, as Cameron gets the hand pass out to Collins, that it's between him and Minton Connell for the full forward position. Lepic. They have both played in Western Bulldog sides before, but the way they're structured at the moment, Probably room for just the one. Kennedy, clear of Croft. Lepic. Trask. Trask at left centre wing. Couple of bounces. Awkward kick off the boot. Ackermanis turns it on Thrippany Bit, goes at goal and kicks it. Great goal. So he joins Richard Champion as the leading goal kicker for the side today. He really earned that one. 12-6 to 24-12. Exactly half. Nice finish by Jason Ackermanis then. Nudge Dent out of the road or his opponent out of the road and uh, finish it off very well. Yeah, he's got a, a lot of talent, hasn't he? Uh, very quick when he gets uh, motoring. And uh, well, he can do the unbelievable. And this is another example of uh, the skills of Jason Ackermanis. Jared, on the list of Western Bulldogs players, there's a lot of them had plenty of the football. What do the stats look like uh, totals against each other? Well, the Bulldogs have had 192 kicks to the Lions, 151 and 123 handballs to 95. So they've had a fair bit more of the footy. They certainly have. And Bamford trying to uh, bring that uh, a little closer. Gets the ball to uh, Bartlett. Bartlett's kick into the pocket. Too high for Ackermanis. Knocked away by Garlic. Eventually finishes with Wirra. Wirra's short kick sets it up for Ellis, but uh, he's going to get a free kick. Maybe the advantage with the Bulldogs, and that's the way it's been paid in the finish. It really wasn't their advantage. Lepic, the 
Western Bulldogs supporters not happy with Justin Lepage. The kick towards half forward has been well marked by Garlic. And LC, you'd have to say that Brad Scott's done a pretty good job on Scotty West uh, throughout the day. He's only had uh, 20 possessions, which for him is uh, well down on his average. He's really worked hard. He's done very well. Since crossing from Hawthorne last year, he's been one of our top players and tagging the best of the opposition each week. Free kick to Crittyhook at right half back. Kick coming from Garlic. Crittyhook bombs it up towards Clark. Couldn't complete it. Robbins, who's been good after half time. Ackermanis off, uh, well, virtually half a step. Spotted Sean Hart. They go across the ground. Back to Scotty Bamford again. And he too has been good after the break. And he gets it down to McRae. Bamford 11 possessions, three marks. I would say a majority of those have been in the second half. Mm. He's, he's done very well since half time. Adds that real spark coming out of the centre and off the wing and uh, just silky skills. So McRae has kicked one goal today for a season's tally of 11. Just so he's hooked that one a little bit. In fact, it hit the post. So one behind to Craig McRae. One goal, one against his name. 24-12 to 12-7. 156 plays 79. Cameron on his own. From the best and fairest winner, pursued by Ashcroft. Ball needs to sit for Hudson. It does beautifully for Paul Hudson. Clark chasing, hasn't given up. Hudson bombs it into the goal square. Wide, too tall. Just back onto the ground. And the Brownlow medalist makes his presence felt pretty well straight away. It was a pretty fair effort by Paul Hudson. He really did uh, take the chaser on. And then he kicked it uh, just with great discipline to the top of the square. How do you rate this guy in all-time big men over the last 20 years? Well, he's a pretty good shot at goal, Robert. He's not, not a great not one on that goal. occasion. Well, we've got a little bit of time to spare. How do you rate him? I mean, he's been, a, he's well, he's been, been hard, a, hasn't he? He's been, uh, he's been certainly up there with the best of them, but particularly in his best years. He's had a uh, four or five year gap where he really did struggle with a chronic knee injury. But uh, since his Brownlow year... This is, without doubt, I think his best, uh, and that's saying something because last year he was uh, quite phenomenal again. Well, this man's got uh, absolute class written all over him, and have a look at that. He took a spectacular mark, and then uh, the pass was equally as efficient to Tyson Lane. For a big man, he must have near the best skills in the game, I reckon. For someone at six foot four that has to use his body so much in the one-on-one -on -one contest, still to come up and left or right foot just delivers it so well. Well, there's no doubt about that, uh, Alistair, as uh, we watch Tyson Lane go for the Bulldogs' 25th goal. And he's got it home. It's a goal. Tyson Lane has kicked two. He spent quite a bit of the game on the bench. But there's the man, Chris Grant, who delivered the ball to Tyson Lane. And Grant, well, he stands second only to uh, Brett Montgomery as the leading mark taker on the, the Western Bulldogs side of the ledger. 15 to Montgomery, 11 to Grant. Tyson Lane playing his first game for season 1998. Keen to do well, kicked a couple of goals. He played 21 games in the Magoos last year. McRae out of the centre for Brisbane. Acker Madison Wirra. Oh, gee, slipped over at the crucial moment. Still, finally Wirra. Mops up well to Dimitita. Just back on the ground. Ellis, clear of Ashcroft. Goes in short, looking for West. And a good block there by Brad Johnson. Sees the ball out of bounds in front of the small scoreboard on the other side. Last seven minutes of the game here at Optus Oval. Blown apart in the first quarter, if you've just joined us, by the Western Bulldogs. Kicking 11-2 to 1-1. Darcy and Clark. West. Robbins. West held when he didn't have the ball. And will get the free kick. Scotty West, son of these eyes, at left half back. Wide in front, just a little bit too far underneath it. Chris Grant couldn't add to his mark tally either. Dent, beautifully measured pass. Colin York loves to kick a goal. High and long, it's going, it's going, it's gone, it's a goal! Another goal kicker. I was going to say, you won't see Steve Colin York gamble or not. <laughs> he wants to keep his place in the 22 more, more than that in the 18, I'm sure. 12 players for the Bullies have scored goals and we still
still have six minutes remaining. Well, it's 90 points the margin now. And the big hundred starting to loom. I think that's uh, foremost in most players' minds, whether or not you're on the winning side of the defensive side. You, uh, you don't want to get beaten by 100 points, Alistair. No, certainly that's not something you've got to look at in the last few minutes. Obviously, the game is gone, but uh, look, let's keep it under 100 points, grab something. Something to keep the old legs chuttering along. Yep. Well, still the Bulldogs prepared to share it around to try and set something up. Colin Hughes kick has been marked by Curley. He's another player that will be looking to get a fair bit of the footy in the last uh, few minutes. The ball rebounds back to Darcy. His hand pass not too bad. Colin Newt combines with Dent. Dent to half forward. Mark taken by Cameron. Cameron with the right. And well done. Out in front of Cook once again in front of the Carlton Social Club here at Optus Oval. James Cook going for his third goal and could make the margin 96 points. You said once again, Robbo, that's been the difference, I think. Uh, moving into the forward line, those precise passes from uh, 80, 70 metres out have uh, hit the leading forward on the chest almost every time. Well, usually not a bad kick for goal, but uh, I think he's missed everything, kicked it out of bounds on the full. So free kick for Brisbane in that right back pocket to be taken by Justin Lippich. Who's still getting the rounds of the kitchen. Approaching the last five minutes of the match. Lepic short to Sean Hart. He'll give it back to Lepic. In turn will come across the goal. White calling for it. Not the greatest of passes. White good enough to get there. Was it inside the boundary line? It was, but only just. He's asking Cook to get back on the mark. Daryl White. Left half-back flank. Dick Voss. Ashcroft. Great kick. Beautiful weighted kick. Bradshaw just inside 50. Running shot at goal. And it bounces. It bounces back, but he's put it through for four points. Well, that will be something for his confidence because Alistair, he's been a little bit down today. Missed marks that he should have taken. Made a couple of fumbles, hasn't he? Yeah, dropped a couple that he usually swallows. I mean, he's a very talented player and certainly at 19 he's got a big future in front of him, but that'll do him the world of good for the coming weeks. This is perhaps uh, almost Brisbane's best passage of play for the day. And it just is amazing uh, what you do when you get some run and you get some uh, delivery that hits some targets. How's that? Cross the line and bounce back. Didn't want to waste any space. <laughs> it's an amazing thing, that oval ball, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Just goes in all different directions. Brisbane get their 13th goal through the agency of Bradshaw. Scotty West, his hand pass. Dimitina, very well done. Johnson to Lane. Lane wider. If it sits for Grant, you'd reckon this will be a goal, wouldn't you? Chris Grant bouncing. Scotty Wind will kick it. No, he won't. It's been smothered off the boot and eventually rushed through for a behind to the Bulldogs. Once again, it was Matthew Clark that got uh, first use of the footy in the middle of the ground, but it was taken away from, by the uh, Bulldog players. And the centre bounce takeaway is now 28 to 13. It's some an area, uh, LSC, that's just got to be improved on up north. Yeah, it certainly has. I mean, it's been one of our strengths over the past couple of seasons, but certainly in the um, last couple of weeks we have struggled in the midfield. Ashcroft tries to get the hand pass away. Clark, the dock. Can the Lions finish full of running? Robbins. Bradshaw, Ellis. And bustling down there, McRae. Clear of garlic on his wrong foot, which is his right. Crudiok in front. Lawrence, the big fly from behind. And the umpire says it was a push. And Lawrence has conceded the free kick. Impressive stats for young Ben Roberts. He's had 16 kicks and 13 hand passes. And again, uh, Robbo, I think most of those would have been after half time. He really has worked hard, hasn't he? Yes, he's played pretty well. This is Darcy, who's given Scotty Wine a rest. Wine just back onto the field in this last quarter. Had all of the third quarter on the bench. Dent. Oh, we've seen better kicks from him today. Intended for Crediok, but couldn't find him. And it's out of bounds. Okay, Madison Dent exchanging words. <laughs> ooh, ooh. One of the toughest men in footy, I'd reckon, Matthew Dent. Probably best uh, left alone by Jason Ackermanis. Yeah, I'd go along with that. Robbins again. They'll get fined here in a minute. Ellis in front. Bradshaw has to beat three. Just crazy. Garlic. 
Now West. Cameron. West again. Still going on. Up towards Dimitina. A little gift to Johnson. Ramiro. That's about as far as they're going. And the road was lapping. But there's nobody home at all. Dimitina on his own. Measures the kick. And the mark taken by Tyson Lane. Emergency umpire out speaking to those two protagonists. Yeah, Looks like someone might be sent off for the blood rule here. I think amongst that little to-do down, down the forward line. It's dead would probably get last word with an echo. Still he's uh, badgering Jason Akamanis. Settle down, Jason. Don't report him for that, for crying out loud. I thought he went for his book then, the emergency umpire. He's getting ear bashed from dead. He's getting ear bashed from the umpire. And he's got to come off for the blood rule. That's what the hold-up is. But there was nothing in that, really. He's been replaced by Johnson. Well, the good thing about footy, except in the last game, is that you've always got next week to come back and uh, restore a bit of faith. And you go to Sydney next week, Alistair, and uh, that would be a pretty fair spot to start. Yeah, certainly um, Sydney actually up in Brisbane, but uh, yeah, a big effort for us uh, to bounce back from this one. Tyson Lane likes kicking a goal. He's put that one through. I and mean, certainly after a disappointing day like that, the last thing you need is someone reported, so I hope nothing come out of that one. Certainly we'll need uh, Jason Foran next week. He was a little bit unlucky that the camera happened to be on him because they were jostling behind play. And... Uh, I don't think he connected with any of those. It was all a lot of ear bashing, wasn't it, really? Well, if uh, Jason Ackerman has got reported for that little backhander, uh, Robert, you would just have well, We'd go back to grade three, wouldn't we? Just uh, <laughs> It was as if the, uh, the uh, he was being just incited by the emergency umpire. I just hope that that would be absolutely ridiculous. They wouldn't waste their time, surely. Uh, One would hope not. Anyway, the uh, football still to be played out. One and three quarter minutes left in this match. And the Bulldogs striving hard for a bigger score even again. Grant gathers, then slips the hand pass to Ramiro. Down forward they go, Curley. He won't handball again, Steve Colinuk. He'll go for goal and just miss. Good on you, Steve. It didn't let, it let you down, Robbo. In the real <laughs> Kevin Bartlett mould, Steve Kolodnik goes for goal. Oh, I know him pretty well, Peter. I'll see a fair bit of him, so I'll have a bit of a rib of him. <laughs> you he already have. He won't mind that. Daryl White to kick in for Brisbane. Gee, it's a big margin, isn't it? 27-15 to 13-7. What's that? Uh, 92 points. <laughs> He's unbelievable, this bloke. This is a Lappin running away from half back kicks it out to the wing where Bamford just three kicks is it to uh, Nigel Lappin mark taken here by McRae well it was uh, last year or the year before Jared that he played State of Origin uh, last year he was uh, he's had a couple of good years in a row Nigel Lappin and I mean this one really I think uh, every player goes through it where things don't work for you and this has been uh, that sort of year for Nigel Lappin and I guess, Alistair, uh, every player faces what they call the crossroads, and Nigel's there right now. He can go on and become a champion player, which he's uh, indicated he can be, or he can uh, really just struggle a little, uh, in the next few years and perhaps Peter away as a player. For sure. I mean, he's an outstanding talent and yes. been a very, very good player for um, Brisbane over the last couple of years. But, um, yeah, I hope he bounces back. I mean, he's had a uh, quiet day today, but uh, he'll bounce back, and I'm sure he'll be there. He would be in your best uh, three or four players when oh, he's no up doubt. and running. He's no just, he is a fantastic player when he's uh, when he's got his act together. Very much in the mould of a Peter Matera, how he carries the ball yep. so far, takes people on. Last few seconds of the game, Jose Romero has the footy short up towards the 50 metre line. Wira, Garnick as they share it around. That'll be the master of the scoring, Bamford. Two pocket battleships there, back to Ashcroft, back to McRae, but there's the siren. The ninth biggest win ever in round 16, recorded by the Western Bulldogs as they blew the Brisbane Lions out of the water in the first quarter with 11 goal burst. And they finished up kicking 27 15, 177 to 13 8 86.